righty. Welcome, everyone. Hopefully, everyone can hear me all right. Uh, last time I remember, you guys couldn't hear them. You couldn't hear me. So, uh, Bob, give give us a sound check. Yeah, okay. That, that works. Okay. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody, to another episode of Quest for the Frozen Flame, brought to you by the Knights of Last Call. I am your game master, Derek Melinda, and I am joined by Bob, who is playing Droga the Ranger. Uh, Mr. Smith, who is playing Joran, the cleric, the war Today, priest. It is Jose, the cleric. <laughs> oh, ho. Now, I'm drinking some taint of the mammoth. <laughs> oh. uh, we've got Tim, who's playing Breck, the f -f 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 fighter. I and, thought he was going somewhere different with that. <laughs> and then we had, uh, and then we've got Kaz, who is playing Thrawn, the barbarian, and also wrestler. Um, so if uh, if you're new to our stream, uh, welcome. If you're a recurring uh, fan and you're coming back here, maybe you're a subscriber, maybe you're a adventurer, maybe you're a patron. Uh, welcome, welcome all. Uh, we enjoy this opportunity to sit down and get to play some fun games with our our friends and have all of you sit around and 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 join us and and get to get to join in the fun as well. So um, we got we got a couple of uh, cool uh, things to talk about real quickly. Uh, First things first, last time that we played, there was a tip goal of $150 to unleash the beast. And this was to awaken Thrawn's inner spiritual rage that could threaten to overcome and destroy him, but also could unlock great and untoward power. This session, you're going to begin to see the first inklings of that happening. And uh, that is because of you all at home being so generous and helping support this show. Uh, as I've said before on this show, we've got uh, production costs. Uh, these fine gentlemen get some pay for the time compensation for uh, being here. And so your tips and your donations help support all of this and help keep this running. Uh, our current goal is to begin the awakening. That's right. Brex Hatchet, the Bone Hatchet. The um, main character of the story. The, the main character, one of the main character in the story, um, has long been perhaps rumored to be stronger than Breck himself. Who wields who has, <laughs> has oftentimes been discussed. Uh, there have been several MVPs that were not Breck, but were in fact the Bone Hatchet. Um, and so uh, today's tip goal, or into next session, if we don't meet, meet today's goal, is to awaken the hatchet. Um, and uh, if we do that, we will find a way within the context of the story and the adventure path and challenges presented to the players to start working that in. So this is a cool, fun way to say thank you for supporting the show uh, and to have some fun with you all as, you know, get you let you know we kind of lead into some of the funny tropes and memes that are kind of emerging uh from our game uh including toric uh kaz's the dinosaur which he wrestled into submission way back in episode two and that brings us to episode seven last time the group completed their quest of transporting or or, or leading the broken tusks across the Gornok Plains. The burning mammoths had been on their tail for some weeks, but finally, through a clever ambush and a clever, clever series of maneuvers, the scouts were able to delay the burning mammoths and give the broken tusks the time they needed to make their journey across the rest of the plains to the beginning of the mighty Tusk Mountains. Now, the Tusk Mountains are a formidable uh, ice filled, snow-filled, jagged, high-elevation series of peaks, which in some cases marks the eastern boundary of the realm of the Mammoth Lords. And in this time, the last several generations of the Broken Tusks, the uh, following does not cross those mountains once. Long ago, they did, but that was in the Ithgir, the before time. Now they are in the Seorn, the after time, the time of sadness. And why are they sad? Because almost 100 years ago, the broken tusks were part of a larger following. That's right, the burning mammoths were one group. And the burning mammoths decided to, to wage war and to carry the mighty primordial flame across the, uh, the, the mountains and into uh, the world wound to fight the demons. But a group of broken tusks uh, who believed in the peaceful teachings of Sister Cinder and that the gift of the primordial flame from Sister Cinder to her people was not to be used as a weapon of war, stole the primordial flame, and they hid it. They took it to where our scouts find themselves today, 
Red Cat Cave, a sacred ancestral place for the Kelid people, whose caves have been used as a place of spiritual uh, communion with nature and the spirits of nature for untold generations. There, a great and powerful natural being, a awakened animal guardian spirit protector known as, known as Syarstic, the painted tiger, dwelled. Impressing their great need upon them, the ancestors of the broken tusks, including grandfather I was own mother, took the purloined primordial flame and entrusted it to Syarstic. This is, by the way, all background for uh, uh, catching people up if you haven't seen our first six episodes. Um, trusting Syarstic with the primordial flame to guard it. Syarstic understood the importance of the flame and agreed to do so. But alas, not a few years went by before Syarstic was slain and the primordial flame stolen. And thus began this great calamity of events. The darkening of the skies, the shortening of the season, the dropping of the temperatures. The realm of the Mammoth Lords itself, sustained by the power of the primordial flames, began to fail. And with his dying breath, Grandfather Iowa asked the scouts if they could do what no broken tusk has been able to do so far. To journey eastward, to guide the following away from the burning mammoths, but to do something even greater, even harder. To see if they can recover the primordial flame. If they can walk back and trace back all across all those many generations and discover what happened to that powerful artifact, that relic of Sister Cinder. And perhaps with the primordial flame, the broken tusks, the burning mammoths, perhaps all of the realm of the mammoth lords can be saved. Their investigation begins here at Red Cat Cave, at the very edge of the Tusk Mountains. Now, time is of the essence, for the burning mammoths are even now making their way eastward. The mammoth lords, some mammoth lords fear that they may be cutting to the northeast and are trying to cut off the following before they make their turn north. For again, in this time, the, the following dare not cross the Tusk Mountains and must instead stop at their edge, turn north, and head straight up. Still, the scouts, the mammoth lords, and the people feel strong enough with the high morale and high food and high herd that they trust the scouts and the, who have earned their trust um, through actions and through deeds, um, and they believe in the importance of Grandfather Iowa's missions, as the scouts do. And so... The scouts find themselves uh, here at the edge of Red Cat Cave. And this is where we ended our last session. Yeah, watch out for those cave paintings. Um, okay. There we go. Uh, okay. All right, there are two copies of me. Oh, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> I just, I, I just fixed you there, buddy. Um, all right. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, so, sorry about that. Here we go. So, last time that we played, you guys made your way to Red Cat Cave, and here you uh, 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 oh, discovered that this entire uh, ancient cavern. Uh, made of a rich, iron-rich red sandstone, shaped into the maw of a great saber-toothed cat, was covered in ancient cave paintings. And as you came close to one, one of those cave paintings came alive, a two-dimensional haunt that ripped free, imbued with the latent spiritual energy of this place. Joran could sense that this, this rage, this madness that infests these caves... Um, seems to almost be a sentient thing and is causing these cave paintings to come to life. Um, it lashed out, it attacked you, uh, and Joran, I believe, with a religion check, uh, uh, took care of it. So um, that is what we have um, going on for right now. So, gentlemen, first things first. Uh, from last time, uh, Bob, you had a bonus hero point uh, from... Uh, uh, winning the the poll for best uh, for MVP, I believe you won that on the back of uh, the double the double critical sh double critical hits with the double shot. Is that right or the twin best, shot? Best I ever rolled. <laughs> um, and then uh, our uh, 
our uh, we hype, a, hype boss. Oh, yeah, hype boss poll. <laughs> yeah, the hype boss got to pick one as well, and Bob, uh, for being the hype boss at the end of the session, um, and that was Steven, and Steven decided to give you an extra hero point as well. So, And Rick S. is starting off this hype boss nice and fast. <laughs> oh, yeah? I, I must oh, yeah. have missed it. Well, I didn't want to, I didn't want, you were doing such a good monologue oh, at the sorry. beginning, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Uh, Rick S., thank you for the $50 tip, the super chat. Good luck, heroes. Try yeah. not to die. That's Very the second nice. try not to die that I've seen in the chat, so I'm like getting a little nervous. They don't that... really believe in us, do they? <laughs> <laughs> they've seen us play, so I like, guess right they've seen us play from. now. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, you guys got to think. Now, uh, Droga, it looks like you still got a fear effect on you, so. I mean, probably always. He's scared of the cave. I mean, Spooky. Bob, if you want to put that fear back on you for role-playing purposes, I will approve of that. Now, this is Pathfinder 2. I could give you a hero point, but you're at your maximum, so there's nothing I can actually do, but, you know. You, can't, you can just be scared. You can just be scared. I will choose not to and hope that my roles are good today. Awesome. And again, thank you, everybody. Uh, during our live plays, uh, especially me, I don't have uh, chat up. It's not part of our thing like we do for our normal live stream. So I apologize if I miss any tips or super chats or, or awesome uh, uh, comments or subs. Uh, we will try to uh, we'll try to get those uh, with um, – uh, during a break or when we ever have, have a, a stop in the action, I'll try to catch everybody up. But again, I want to say thank you everybody for joining and uh, boys, if we're, uh, we're good to go, we can get underway here. Cause yeah. I, cause I think you guys are pretty close to level three. Oh yeah. Uh, um, and I can so, taste it. All right. So I do like leveling up. <laughs> Let me it go ahead. <laughs> all right. Well, as we said, pour some salt on my wounds. Got it. I don't know Checks what that is. Rub some dirt in it. Rub some dirt in it. Spit in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Let's see. I don't think it's a critical failure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's just a failure. DC is fifteen, right? Uh, it, it is. I actually haven't seen the roll. I haven't so seen just, the roll yet either. It, it, it just popped up in the chat. I, I didn't. Oh see wait, roll. I, I'm looking at religion roll. I'm sorry. Uh, From thirteen days and twenty two hours ago, that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm lagging. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, I, I think we all. Yeah, something must be. Ah, Foundry. Foundry is so awesome. Refresh. Cheers to you. <laughs> well, this is more of a Forge thing, I assume. Uh, it could be a Forge thing as well. Um, AWS when? Um, so uh, for those of you, by the way, uh, who are wondering, like, oh, wait, uh, this is supposed to be Root. That's coming. If you saw our shorts, you know that Bob and I were hard at work this past weekend, uh, upgrading, building new tables, new sets. All of that's coming. Are we trying to be critical role? I can't say, but, you know, I will say that when it's all said and done, everything I finish will end with, how do you want to do that? <laughs> all right. He started to grow his hair out for some odd reason. Yeah, so I'll, just, I'll, just get a, I'll just get a wig at this point. Um, well, you have right. to get one for the uh, Leshy thing anyway. So. That's true. That's true. That's also, true. keep in mind, uh, yeah, so today is September 27th, but in about a month, so in two weeks, we're going to do uh, episode eight of Quest for the Frozen Flame. But in four weeks, and that would be October 25th, so the week, essentially the week of Halloween, that is going to be our Leshy one shot. I'm going to be stepping down to be a mere player, and Bob himself is going to be our game master. Now, can you imagine a world in which you have to game master me, Smith, Vin, self confessed cynic himself, and Damien Paul no longer? Bob, I'm sorry, uh, I, you're not paid you well enough to, for this. You don't have to imagine long because it's coming in a month. <laughs> it's going to be uh, pretty ridiculous. Um, so uh, definitely make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, um, Jorn, uh, looks like you successfully rattled off a medicine check there. Yes, I'm bleeding slightly less now. Got it. Okay. Congratulations. All right, so uh, yeah, you're only down three hit points. All right, well, uh, after a, a brief moment, uh, Jorn, you still don't have continual recovery or anything like that right you're still on the one hour uh no i am in the hardest levels of pathfinder right now so my character can't do anything effective all right got it noted um uh the uh after defeating the cave painting uh, the haunt with a, a powerful word of blessing of Saren ray for for peace for this anguished spiritual sense um the uh cave painting settled uh once again remerging into the stone wall and now Ahead of you uh, lies the darkened maw, the entrance to Red Cat Cave. And what would you guys like to do? 
guess, guess we, we gotta follow go them in. rails. <laughs> Um, choo -choo. I, I, I mean, I to be fair, I mean, you could just turn around and leave. Turn around. We Turns out this place is kind of scary, damage. guys. Let's, uh, right, let's get out of here. the burning cord. Um, I just also just want to be mindful if there's any uh, more paintings on the walls we should be keeping an eye out for. All right, yeah, well, good call. Who can produce light for us? Because, I can, you know, and I did. I already turned sick. it on. Well done. Yeah, you guys should have your uh you guys should have control or option to to torch yourself. We might have to do that. Torch yourself. Torch yourself. It is a light burning myself mammoth. on fire. <laughs> uh but right now, yeah, only uh I think Smith has a torch on. So okay. um but uh yeah, so to answer your question, Bob, as you begin moving in, and again, the, the caverns here are natural, but they have been worked by countless generations of your forebears. So the walls here are almost smooth and not through, uh, you know, metal on metal, but this is through stone chisel and, and just hard work. Um, and almost every surface, honestly, Bob, has various paintings and, you know, uh, etchings, runes, um, you know, sort of... Uh, primitive paints smeared on them that have sort of aged to a patina, you know, the sort of very pictographic imagery of, of, of hunters and the great beasts and the mammoths and the, the, the great saber tooth cat and uh, the, the uh, horrific dinosaurs that, uh, you know, roam the, the, the Gornok plains. They're all sort of encompassed here. In fact, in some ways, um, none of you are particularly bright or intelligent or well-versed in history, Jeez. but no, no, wow. no. I, That's I'm, how you really feel. Starting the session off with that. Huh? <laughs> Where did that come from? I, I, I'm not. I'm talking about your characters, not you. Oh, no. right, oh okay. Right, right. Um, in some ways, you can actually see that these images, starting at the beginning of the cave, sort of tell the history of the Kelid people. Um, you know, you can see here, even early on, a sign of the Kelids struggling to survive um, in a darkened age. You could see like primitive, very primitive drawings of, uh, you know, almost stick figure like, of like all of the animals are dead, all of the trees are dead and the people themselves are dying. Um, and just as you begin to enter into the cave, just from the light from Joran's, I believe it's a magical illumination, Joran. Yes. Joran, uh, what does Joran's light spell look like, being a uh, cleric of Sister Cinder? Um, he has a spear out, and it is literally just burning, but the spear is not being consumed. So it doesn't have a pleasant glow. It's it's just like fire. Got it. Okay. So kind of like uh, uh, Game of Thrones. 100%. Red, Red Priest. Yeah, okay. Got yes. it. Sweet. Very, good. <laughs> very sweet. Um, you can see uh, a, a very large pictograph drawn towards these sort of, again, primitive carved steps. This may have been sort of a natural um, series of plateaus, but the, the hands of many Kelid forebears have sort of etched them and scraped them into a sort of a stairway of sorts. But you can see the appearance of a great flame in the sky and, and the people coming out, and you can see descending down from the heavens this glowing orb of flame. It's literally the creation myth, the, the the bestowal of the primordial flame unto your ancestors um, and them taking it and sort of uh, giving honor to Sister Cinder. And you can see really the beginning, the foundation of what were the two greatest gifts that le kept the people alive, the mammoths and the flame. And that's the burning mammoths to kind of give uh, homage to to both sources of life that kept them alive through this age of darkness and led the Kelly people to this promised land. And all of this is just the beginning of your people's history. And it's all sort of told here in pictographs uh, over the first 20 or 30 or so feet of the cave entrance. So, and none of them leap out and attack you, at least oh, not yet, at least not Sweet. yet. But Joran did note that the powerful spirit of rage, which almost, you know, maybe if, if you have, spell casting capabilities so certainly Joran, but even uh people forget i forget tim probably forgets that his character is technically a bard um, i'm trained in occultism uh, <laughs> oh, okay. you know. uh, uh, right so so because you're trained in occultism um you can even feel this rippling undercurrent this is a spiritual place and there's uh you know sort of an an emptiness here a loss uh, an an anger a rage that sort of permeates through it um so Again, that's all sort of fluttering about. All right, what do you guys want to do now? Yes, we're going to proceed in. 
All right. I will follow the light. All right. Um, Well, you know, roughly speaking, kind of put your guys' minis into some sort of... uh, Oh, order? You know, rough order how you want to be. At some point, I may call for an initiative check if some sort of encounter breaks out. So it's good to know. Ranger in the back, but with the ready. Got it. Or do you want me behind you to cover and make sure you can't get flanked on? Me? You got the bear. You're good. I got the Save bear, it. yeah. Barrack Barrack yeah, the bear is no joke. He's you got Barrack. Better than I am. It's good. All right. Well, the stairs descend downwards, maybe about ten or fifteen feet into the cave, and you can feel that sort of cool dampness that accompanies most caverns. This cavern must have a source of you're you're getting close to mountains, Bob, so you're actually becoming ah. somewhat useful. Um Seems like I'd be useful here, finally. (laughs) It is possible that for some of you who were born and raised amongst the Broken Tusks, that uh, this may have been uh, a dare if you were particularly brave as a young um, Kellid man or woman, that you may have taken this dare, which is to to go this far, right, to the steps. But no one's been here for a a hundred years? But no one has... A little, like... Okay. Draw, like, a a line in the sand. (laughs) Yeah. You've dared, like, who's gone the furthest. Exactly. But no one that you know of has ever been further okay. than this. And I Bob, and someone, like, told me a rumor to go left. Yeah, so, Bob, <laughs> so to answer your question, Bob, um, uh, to, to the best of your knowledge, your tribe um, used to come here every year as part of the Great Migration. And then they took the Primordial Flame, they hid it here, and for the first couple of seasons, they would come and actually give thanks and offer prayers to it and, you know, bestow onto the great guardian gifts of, of life and energy and protection. And then only less than a decade after it was installed here, um, they came and found that the guardian spirit had been, or the guardian had been slain and had been replaced with a vengeful spirit, uh, indiscriminate rage. Um, It attacked them, chased them off. uh, And then, you know, the, the place gave off, basically bad spiritual vibes. The primordial flame had been stolen. And since then it's been sort of, you know, uh, uh, bad stuff, right? Like the, 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 yeah, it's both, not only that, you know, maybe, you know, there, I don't want to say there was a cover up or a conspiracy, but right. But like the broken tusks kind of wanted to forget the past. There's been a lot of like head in the sand blinders on for the last several generations where it's like in denial almost of that, of that path. Um, and so there's kind of this idea of like, we don't want to go there. We don't want to acknowledge it. Let's let the, let, let's let the younger generation forget about it. And until grandfather Iowa can, you know, sort of told you these stories on his deathbed, even you who had grown up within the following did not know the sort of secret history and birth and Genesis of, of how your following came to be. And like we talked about earlier, that may have left you feeling a little bit conflicted at times. So I agree. All right. But Jordan, do you, do you want to say a quick prayer before we head on in? This cave is filled with rage. But perhaps worse, it is filled with regret. Our prayers will not be heard here, only our deeds. We must set right the wrong that was done here. We are the prayer. I like that. I do too. All right, Joran, get to hear a point. No. Um, it's, good, it's a good prayer. Great RPG. <laughs> Great RPG. Great RPG. RPG. All right. Okay. All right. (laughs) Okay. That's okay, Uh, Darren. Well, you guys can't hear my soundboard. I I know it's coming because I can see you acting it out. So I just like to pretend Derek's having a stroke when that happens. (laughs) Like he just he snapped. That was it. (laughs) He's just seizing out like. You just, I just fall, I just fall off the screen, and that's it. That's it. Bob's like, well, I join me Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> a picture of a Bernie man with technical difficulties. <laughs> right, it's just, it's just an elephant good. on fire. If we did have technical difficulties, that's what it should be. That's fantastic. <laughs> it is. Um, okay. Um, so before you is a damp uh, cave. The floor, the stone, the ceiling, all stone, but. The floor is not neatly swept or anything like that. So there is a, a good layer of dirt, dust, um, some still some some plant debris here, leaves and the like, because you're still fairly close to the entrance. Um, but you can see from the light of your torch that it descends downward into a, a, 
series of passageways and caverns, one of which heads to the right uh, and one of which heads to the left. And he uh, will proceed bravely. Will, first, before, do you, nope. did we see any tracks or anything? Uh, Bob, go ahead and make a survival check to see if you do. Bob, oh. Bob, you're not, you might be the first humans who've ever been here. Oh, wait, sorry, you didn't crit fail. Bob, you see nothing. Okay. You're blind. It's is, too dark in the back. Am I drawn in any particular direction? Hmm. Like uh, my, my inner spirit is. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I got you, Kaz. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, make a will check. <laughs> is that a thing in this game? Is I that, mean, would that be a save? Yeah. Well, it's like making a save yeah, using yeah, your will okay. save, but it's not. It, you're I'm not using, actually saving. You're yeah. not saving. You're, I'm using it as a as a. <laughs> oh no. Kaz, actually, no, Kaz, actually, you hesitate for a moment at the at the brink for um, as you get closer and you approach this threshold, you suddenly have a vision of of just fire and anger and rage, um, this this powerful heat that overcomes you and you suddenly feel it burning within you and you know when you kind of come to after this brief fugue you see that you have like maybe cut into your hands a little bit you've clenched your your fists so tightly um you've almost cut in and as you look down at your fingers you see that your nails have maybe grown uh -oh. like like half an inch to like almost dagger like sharp points like saber tooth doesn't look uh, at uh, uh, yeah. Thrawn as this happens, yeah. keeping his eyes straight ahead, but nonetheless <laughs> kind of speaks to the group. <laughs> Keep your wits about you. There will be voices in here that will speak as if they are in your mind, but they are not your voice. It is the voice of anger. Remember who you are. And with that, he walks forward bravely and confidently to get a better mm. look at these passages. All right. I am going to create a new resource for Kaz. Um, this is called the, uh, this is called the rage. You need to clip his nails. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, nail clipper. We must invent the nail clipper. <laughs> um, and so uh, we are going to, uh, as part of the, uh, the Unleash the Beast from last time, um, Kaz has the ability, and this is going to be, as he learns more, you'll learn more, um, but certain things are going to start begin to fill up his rage track. Um, and as I said right now, Kaz, you have the ability you felt that you could tap into that. Anytime you are in a rage and you miss a uh, strike, you may, as a fortune effect, re-roll the d20 using our hero point rules, which means uh, one through ten is treated as an eleven through twenty. Um, and you could do that even if you don't have any hero points available to you. But that will that will increase your rage by one point. Now at this point, Kaz, you, like your character, don't really fully know what that is. All you know is that there is this power this anger, this spiritual energy within you. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. All right, good. All right, so that is that. Um, and you guys begin moving uh, in. Okay. Uh, some, some bones! Yeah. Look at the bones! Yeah, look at the bones. Uh, yeah, so as you guys uh, come in, actually, I think it's some kind of strange... Uh, yeah, scraps of sticks and brush you could see uh, 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 there, Smith, uh, have been piled upwards. Uh, they look like um, they maybe have been um, left here for a long time. Various animals, perhaps, sort of heaped together in piles. Um, you see signs throughout this space, though. Uh, uh, there, Joran. Signs that you recognize all too clearly from your days uh, in, in war against far eviler things. You see the unmistakable signs of the, the bony traversings or footprints of the undead, particularly skeletal creatures. Okay. Have these guys ever seen the undead? I don't think so, no. <laughs> no. I mean, like, that's like, you know, super. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying These to remember. Just dead bodies like, to us, right? Uh, yeah. I, I guess I would know if they'd seen it because that would probably be the talk of the town. 
But you might have, right, Jordan? Oh, yeah, oh, Jordan. I've seen a shit ton of it. Yeah, so you guys oh, okay. just yeah. identified it. <laughs> right. Oh. Well, we I, take it for granted when we play D&D. Oh, it's a zombie, right? right but, I'm, like, you guys are kids, and you're going to yeah. go up. Uh, it's a dude, and you're going to cut kill him, and he's going to keep coming. Um, yeah. yeah, like it's like, in, you know, like a zombie movie. If that was in D&D, you'd be like, all right, 35 zombies appear down the other end of the hall. You'd be like, all right, uh, let's start with the left. We'll just make our way to the <laughs> <laughs> um, You're surrounded by zombies. Sweet. I won't have to stride. Okay. Uh... <laughs> that checks out. <laughs> Excellent. Right, like oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> right, like, like, Action you, Academy. <laughs> oh, the stupid zombies. They're slowed. You know that, by the way. You got to yeah. know that. You know they're slow permanently, right? So that's great because now I could just completely destroy them. We'll just kite them. It's fine. We'll just fall back. <laughs> we just got them. Yeah. We'll <laughs> All right. Um, Though some zombies have that sudden surge thing in PF2, and it is sweet. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, you do see the signs that something or someone or something has been killed here recently and in the past, but you also see the. Um, s- footprints. Sorry, that just sounded funny. Uh, meaning there's old bones, there's I new got, bones. I got it. I yeah. just like did yeah. it. This person was killed so badly that they were killed like, in the past. <laughs> Recently <laughs> and in the past. Look, look at the bones! <laughs> Our time traveling. Like, wow, you got rocked. <sighs> Something is here with sharp teeth capable of biting. Bob, you remember that, right? That was from nope. your favorite movie. Nope. Oh, man, Bob, you suck. What movie? Badly. Bob, Bob, Droga, Droga, you're tracking. Yeah. One of the victims has left you a message carved okay. into the living rock. It says, beware. Now, this is carved like stone chisel. Mm-hmm. Beware the. Uh. Oh, is this that stupid. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Monty, or, uh, Monty Python movie. God, it was so yeah. bad. Yeah. Why? Why would you chisel? Because <laughs> uh. well, that's what it says. Um. It's so dumb. That rabbit cave thing. Oh, uh. so good. Um. Oh, oh okay. I'm I'm crying over here. That was me watching the movie. What are we doing? Terrible. Sorry, sorry, sorry we're tangenting. We're, we're not playing this game. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I I apologize. I apologize. Okay. So John goes. <clears throat> Beware, the dead, the dead walk here. You mean they the dead walk? What? <laughs> it's not a metaphor. <laughs> oh, okay. The dead walk here. Now, Joran, you have enough experience with these things, especially from your, you know, your youth, to know that my what, PTSD. Yeah, whatever, uh, whatever horrific, horrible event happened here some ninety or ninety-five years ago. Uh, that same spirit of rage which you felt, that malevolence coming from within the cave, is also likely charging this place with a great deal of necromatic energy. This place is a place of death, a place of suffering. And those are places, are nexus vortices for this kind of activity amongst the undead. All right. I mean, when you, when you say like, the dead walk, I mean, is that like a, I mean... Do they, can we, can we stop them from walking? <laughs> the magic can be unwound through physical force. But is this like that painting? Uh, more physical. I think you'll have an easier time with it, but they will not die the way mortal men die. You will have to exert extreme force upon them. Yeah. Sort of flex my bloodied hands. <laughs> right shake it sh- shake it off um yeah. all right well where uh where do you guys want to go i was trying to figure out how to play my character i couldn't remember if clerks get turned in dead in this game i think it's a feat they do not aaron uh, okay. it is a feat which gives you fleeing uh right. when you when you ha- turn on dead is three action sure. heal. yeah oh yeah mm. that makes sense okay move up <laughs> move up towards the that uh pile. The turn on dead feet, which is very disappointing for anybody who's playing Pathfinder 2. And if you want to know I why, they, if you, uh, the um, oh, wait, 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 you don't see any undead yet there, Smith. No, no, I'm sorry. I clicked on it because I wanted to open it and then it just sent it. Away. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, turn on dead feet. Uh, if the if the undead critically fails, yeah, it's save versus your uh, your heal spell, positive energy damage, uh, then it, it's fleeing one for a round. It's not very good. Um, okay. I would definitely change that. 
if I was playing Pathfinder 2, which I am. Good thing okay. we're not. No, like, what? <laughs> well, guys, we could take the wide passage or the narrow passage. I mean, the wide passage is probably the safer one. Yeah, do we really want to deal with undead if we don't have to? For I our mean, quest? I don't even know where they're going to be. They're probably everywhere, but wide sounds good to me. Yeah. Oh, wide was down? Yes, it <laughs> yeah. was. Because it's right. wider down there. Correct. It's narrow up here. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, Joran, you begin moving in. Your spear point uh, filling the uh, the area with uh, its, its light and illumination. Um, and now... Any, all of you can see easily, uh, pretty st stern tracks. Uh, Bob just rolled really badly. Um, mm -hmm. That definitely show the signs of human feet, porters, uh, booted footprints, uh, probably very deep into this, this soil and this dirt. A lot of areas. It even looks like this cave was maybe being cleaned out or swept out. And just at the edge of your torch light, or I should say your magical light, uh, Joran, you can start to see the shape of something large in the darkness, immobile. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's difficult to say, but there might be something metallic there that's just catching the edge of your light. Ooh, a shiny. All right. Jordan will cautiously take a step forward, raising yep. his spear. Oh, I can see a little bit. Uh -huh. All right. So Joran, as you start to come into the cave and Joran, I'm just going to, I'm going to bump you here one more square forward. Uh, uh Joran, uh -huh. Joran, as you come forward, you start to see a signs of a bloodbath just in a quick, uh, just a quick like scan of this it looks very quickly like lady prendergrass had made a second camp here um oh. and as you look though you could see that this place has become a tomb there are bodies flung and flown all over the walls uh there are dead people here who are have been left dead there was some sort of uh supplies or or casks that have been torn apart and just ripped apart every every nail pulled out every rivet pulled apart um you know every arrow broken uh, this sort of mindless hateful rage and as you sort of come into this uh, area there uh, mr uh uh, mr uh, joran you see approaching oh, out of the uh out of the darkness you see three skeletal figures begin emerging. The one in the front b stands above the other two. He is clad in some sort of primitive ancient Kelid armor and wields uh, uh, a, a shield battered and torn apart with an ancient faded emblem on it, that of the burning mammoth. The two in the back wield primitive short bows, old and decrepit, but not too different from the form and functionality that Droga uses. For these skeletal warriors, although not possessing flesh, bear all of the signs and equipment of ancient Kelid warriors. The one in the forefront steps forward, his sword raised above, and a voice seems to emanate, not from the skeleton, but from everywhere else around you. Trespass not here, ye living. And the skeletons begin marching forward into attack. And then Breck, who is hanging back in the shadowy darkness. For some reason. <laughs> for some reason. Breck, you hear that same voice emanating from behind you. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. oh hey, it's look, a there's a narrow choke point. <laughs> yeah. All, All right, this side, there. guys. <laughs> oh. Or the shield wall. Dungeon time extreme. All right. I've rolled my initiatives. Let me uh, get you guys into the combat tracker as well. All right. Now, hopefully we can succeed this time. Remember, everybody, uh, to roll initiative, you have to roll initiative, <laughs> not just your perception. All right. Um, let me show everybody at home what we've got right so far. I'll go back to that. Don't worry. Um, the uh, bloody skeletal champion has a... Uh, uh, you guys can't see the top of it. I'm sorry. Uh, but the, we have a bloody skeletal champion at 27. Uh, Droga has a 26. Thrawn has a 20. Then we have a, a guard at 16, a champion at 16, Breck at 10, and Joran. I, I hit the initiative button. just doesn't like me. All right. Well, Joran got a 22. All right. So we've, hey, got, a, go. we've got ourselves an initiative order. So here we go. All right. Um, so as these creatures begin coming out, um, you can see now, as they start to move. In fact, this one here very conveniently got the first turn. Um, as it emerges into the light, and indeed at speed of 25, the first thing it's going to do, Joran, is stride up to you. Mm -hmm. You can see 
that the creature's bones bear slashes right uh, across the bone like claws had ripped through the flesh and into the bone like the bone had almost been gnawed upon or chewed upon and you could see as the skeleton emerges now into your bright light blood freshly flowing blood pours from these slash wounds in the skeletal's body in fact as it comes forward it begins to drip blood off of it as if these slashing wounds so these weird. jaw wounds were freshly made um so the skeleton guys don't get killed by the haunt um well <laughs> the, the, <laughs> yeah right that's exactly what you're gonna hear a point you know? Noted. <laughs> um the uh the skeletal champion uh, emerges forward uh let me see what it's got real quick here yeah okay great as it does so it's going to raise its shield oh oh there we go. And then it is going to uh, attack you with its long sword equivalent. And it gets a 16. Not enough. Whoosh. Uh, whoosh, indeed. All right, so that is uh, that creature's turn. Droga, the ranger, you spring into action first, and you are the first to act. Now, again, I, Droga, you're... Delay. Yeah, Droga, you're right here. You can see at the edge of uh, the vision of the torchlight, there are two skeleton guards, each with short bows. And Breck, who is behind you into the darkness, has said, apparently, that they, he sees and hears the sounds of more skeletons coming in from behind you. All right, Droga, you are delaying? Delaying, at least uh, after Thrawn. All right, well, I'll put you at the bottom yeah. of the initiative, yep. and we'll go to... Uh, let's see. How do I do that? Okay. All right, Joran, you uh, are up for you're up next. All right, uh, Joran uh, quickly dodges the sword that goes to take off his head. Uh, turning around the uh, Thrawn, he places a hand upon his shoulder, and a fiery handprint appears upon him, and his skin begins to char slightly as he gains the power of protection. Wait, okay, wait a second. As you begin casting your spell. Oh, oh, attack opportunity, oh. really? Yes. Oh, my it soldier. Is. Ah. All right. A creature within the monster's reach uses a manipulate action or a move action, makes a rage attack, or leaves a square. All right. Mr. Smith, Joran is struck by the long sword. No. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you're for, you are a mighty warrior in your youth. <laughs> yeah, you're not even yeah, you're not even looking. You just raise your shield and just block it. But uh but that is his reaction, so his reaction is down as well. But I'm gonna say that this guy's probably evil, so Kaz, we'll go with protection from evil on that one. You can just drag that on your character sheet. Yeah, uh there, Kaz, you can just drag that spell effect protection from evil nice. on your character sheet. Got it. And then Joran uh yells, Fall back to the choke point. And he's going to go right here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you would have gotten an attack of opportunity to eat. Anyways, but, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that's okay. All right. So, Thrawn, you're up next, buddy. And remember, Droga, you're delaying. So, at the end of anybody's initiative, yep. you let me know. Yep. All right. Um, As a reminder. Okay, so, since, yep. since I am, I've got this protection on me, my, uh, my mind is slightly cleared as I'm no, no longer completely subsumed by my rage. Yeah, uh, I mean, that totally checks out. I mean, actually, right. that, actually, you get bonus saving throws, yeah. actually, the protection from evil gives you an increased bonus status bonus to will saves against mind controlling effects. So actually anything, right. I would say that you are like completely clear headed there, Cass. So, yeah. So I'm, I heed his warning to like, rather than just charging straight forward, which is what I would normally do in this scenario uh, as the wrestler. Um, I turn and I see we lost your audio there. We lost your audio. <clears throat> Sorry, I will uh, the push to talk. I will rage. However, I will take a step back um, in preparation. All right. So what? what I, ignore I, my spam. I needed to clear it for my spell. Book. There you go. Uh, very simple turn, but I'm basically just preparing for them to move forward against us so what what are exactly are you doing just rage moving back and then passing that's all yeah, yeah rage and then move well that's i think you can do. oh you rage okay yeah you're done then you cannot ready yeah, yeah exactly all right uh droga do you want to go or are you good nope keep keep delaying all right got it all right next up i gotta find this guy where is and those at? archers are gonna pelt us but you know you want me to poke at him I, i'm not 
I, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that this isn't the most my, defensible position. It just might be slightly more until we know what the hell is coming. I know. From the my, uh, my hunter intuition tells me that my arrows might not do as well against skeletons. All right. Uh, Breck. <laughs> yes, sir. From the darkness. Uh, so you are going to be uh, flat footed to this. Dope, um, dope, a, dope, dope. But you, I, ironically, you have cover. So it actually completely cancels out their, their, uh, their brick. But an arrow zips past you from the darkness. Oh, oh snap. Shh. It, uh, <laughs> it misses past you. You just instinctively dodge out of the way. Um, and that is all from that uh, creature. Then Breck coming out from the darkness. Phew, another uh, another skeletal champion emerges, taking two actions to close the distance with you. It raises up its bloodied longsword and brings it down upon you. There we go. 24. That'll hit. All right. Here comes the damage. D8 plus four. Seven points of slashing damage as the skeleton, freshly coated in dripping blood, wields an ancient Kellid weapon down upon you, hacking into you for seven points of damage. All right, it's done as well. Breck. Let me go. Let me go here. Uh, Droga, before, you want to go before Breck? All right. I'm gonna try All to get right. my bear in a flank with uh, with him for you, Breck. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, Droga, yep. you go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt prey. Uh, so Action number one to command uh, Barrack. Okay. When you say hunt prey, that usually involves a target. I'm targeting the skeleton champion that is in front of Breck. Got it. Okay, so you're targeting this guy. Okay, got it. Okay. All and right. Then I'm going to command Barrick. Yep. To get behind him. And he's gonna if he's got the attack of Jenny, he's gonna Yep. He's gonna provoke it. And he does. And he but does. It's double move. <clears throat> and he does. He slashes out as your bear tries to close around him. Oh, he gets a fifteen. No. Uh no. All right, miss. Uh sixteen nice. AC. All right. Uh Breck. That, that is my oh, turn. No, uh drug. Okay, you're not shooting? Uh, hunt prey. Oh, command was two actions. I am shooting. I'm sorry. All right. The only thing is that creature is in uh, yep. your dim illumination. So you have a DC. Uh, it has basically concealment. So you need to make a, a DC five flat check before you even attack. All right. So you uh, account for the darkness. Now make your normal attack roll. Now, is he going to have like plus one for cover, I'm guessing? Uh, he has lesser cover. That's correct. All right. So we're going to hunt prey. Are we? Okay, he has my hunted prey. So we're going to do my my hunted shot. Here we go. Womp 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 womp. All right. Miss miss. Yep. Well, miss we, miss. We, we starting off good this time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> get all those hero points you have. That's right. Uh, uh, well, to I'm be not ready for them yet. <laughs> no, you don't understand how Bob works. Bob gets oh, yeah. seventeen of them. And, mm -hmm. then uses them all the end, and then uses them all at the end of the fight, and he only needs two or three of them, and then loses the other 12. That's how he does that. Um, I have a fear of losing stuff that I have. <laughs> Bob doesn't like to spend anything. anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Breck. Um, all right. <laughs> Barrick uh, does move around to the side of you. Uh, the creature lashes out at it, but uh, to no avail. And uh, uh, But now you send yourself flanking this creature. Uh, but yeah, as Brex just like ducking and dodging and weaving from all these haphazardly shot arrows flying through and next to him and beside him. Yes. He somehow manages to bring down both axes on top of this bloody skeletal champion that's been trying to mess with him. So we're doing a double slice. Great. All right. Make your attacks. The battle axe is coming out first. And then everyone's champion, the hatchet. Is going to finish the job if we get a good hit here. Oh. No, although I do have this cover up, it should not be there. But it, you would have missed anyway. So yeah, um, you. But we got one whoo, hit. Whoo, uh, no, do you? The first one says it hit by zero. Oh, okay. So then you hit, but there's a problem. Yeah. Make a DC five flat check. You are in darkness yes, as sir. well. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Darkness. Oh, you no. missed. Oh. Oh, you attacked the, dark the darkness. <laughs> you attacked the darkness. You didn't attack the skeleton. Uh, your axe uh, in the shadowy illumination, barely at the edge of uh, Joran's um, flickering magical light. You are unable to see the shadowy form of the skeleton in the darkness. And Breck, uh, you miss. And then uh, I say, Sister Cinder, 
protect me. And I cast shield for the first time ever as a bard. <laughs> what? You can cast spells? What? You can yes. cast spells? In this dark place, you find your religion and uh, and cast an occult spell. It doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. Um, all right, Tim, you gain the benefits of a shield spell. Uh, the creature took it to take of opportunity on Droga, so uh, or uh, the barrack, so there's nothing to go there. All right, well, we've got some skeletal guards coming up here. And uh, as noted... Um, this is the case. Thrawn, from the darkness come a series of arrows. You are flat-footed against all of these. Um, and here come some short bow strikes as arrows begin sailing out of the darkness into you. So that's a hit. And that's, ooh, six damage. And then another hit or another attack roll with map. Horrible misses as... Uh, and then an at 20. Um, but that is a 16, which normally would be a miss, correct? Yes. So that gets elevated to a hit because it's a, uh, a 20, a net 20. So three damage from that, uh, from the darkness, basically, as this kind of comes sailing out from you from nowhere. Um, then this guy... It's going to move here into the darkness. Um, you guys can't really even see it here, but uh, another skeleton moves to flank against Barrack, of course, uh, and attacks Barrack as well. And uh, it's going to hit Barrack, and Bob is not here. But when Bob gets back, the uh, the bear takes six points of damage as another skeleton emerges and begins hacking into the mighty creature. Uh, as uh, these archers begin pouring out from nowhere uh, and everywhere, and then lastly, uh, another creature emerges. Kaz. Three shots coming from this uh, archer. All right. 22. Uh, 13 and 2. All right. So Kaz, one hits. And that's going okay. to be six more damage. Man. Damn, they like you, Kaz. What did you do to him? Getting beat up, stepped right. back, no, and I'm went one of <laughs> Sued by the rage now. <laughs> um, all right, all right, Kaz. So you take a you take a pretty good beating. Go through most of you go through all your temp and into your real uh, hit points as these uh, skeletons keep uh, dropping uh, multiple attacks on you. And that is the end of the round. So now this guy goes up next. This guy is going to move right to here. He is going to raise his shield again. And he is going to attack Joran of Mendev. He see right. he see he feels the holy man's presence and is drawn to it. Uh twenty five. Yes, that hits. Eleven damage. Hey. As the yep. as the bloody creature brings down the sword upon you, but it moved, it raised its shield, and it swung. So that's it for it. Um, Joran, your go. And remember, that guy just had his turn. His reaction is back. Right. Okay. Joran is going to uh, raise his shield and begins casting a spell. Which spell? Magic weapon. All right. Well, you know that he's going to attack you. Yep. All right. The creature lashes out with his long sword, taking advantage of you and gets a hit. All right. Uh, and that's eight points of damage. I will block all of that. Got it. So you're using your reaction on your turn to block. Correct. Got it. Uh, and as I uh, block the blow, Joran raises his staff, which bursts further in the light, and he intones the spell of magic weapon. Done. All right. Who, who's getting magic weaponed? Joran. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Joran. That that you know what, Jordan here. Hold on a sec. Let me let me do this. That uh that glow on you that uh the, the of your torch, right? It sudden mm -hmm. it suddenly like uh, uh bursts into uh wider oh, bright, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. bright light as the golden light of Saren Ray sort of starts to like kind of emerge forth. 
<laughs> That's way too much. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, let me turn down the opacity on that, the intensity. There we go. Um, as uh, the powerful light of the spear, it's almost like you just kept channeling into it, um, and now it erupts into a golden burst of flame, filling the chamber, um, and now you can see in the rear the two skeletal guards with their short bows out, um, although the, the fighting going on above you is still a little bit uh, hard to see because of the... Uh, 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 nature of your angle, but uh, good turn. All right. Thrawn. Um, one thing I want to bring up is when I'm raging, I have dark vision. Oh, just okay. Just as a heads up. So yeah, I don't think it would have made oh. any effect on any of the flat-footed attacks. It might have. But, but uh, it you would have been flat-footed. I mean, you would not have been flat-footed, so... Uh, right, but I think you hit by three or more on all of them. Okay, fair enough, but so, that's good. I don't to, think it matters, but... No, no, but that's actually really, really good to know, Um, especially in a party of all Vision's humans. always important, friends. Yeah. All right. All right. Bob is back. You all uh, right? Welcome back. Sorry about yeah, um Stacey was having a little bit of issues. That's that's the old wife. Is that code name for your children were being impertinent? No, she's <laughs> got some blood work that she needed to oh, okay. look at. Right. <laughs> um uh Bob, uh if you scroll back through the log, you'll see that Barrick took some damage. No. Uh, yep. He's dead. Uh, what? Been eviscerated How really. much damage did he take? I don't, remember. I don't remember. I think Ooh. it was six points six. of damage. Six. So you can just tag him for six. Yep, I see it. Okay. I, I, I had forgotten I had dark vision when I'm raging, but I could see everything on the screen, and I was like, why... Why am I able to see things and then I realize? Oh, yeah, the game fixed the, it the for The game you. actually knew. The game actually. The game knew. did it for me. The game uh, knew, but Derek didn't. Boundary. <laughs> well, I don't know that he had. Actually, I could have if hilarious. I cl- if I clicked on his token, then I would have seen what he's seen. Right. Uh, but oh, I did not. Okay. So my my apologies there, Cass. But exactly. like you said, interesting. It, 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 you did not yeah. miss by three or more, so you're okay. But good to know. <laughs> good to know. All right, Thron. Um, the skeletal uh, champion is uh, is uh, right there next to you. Uh, yep. There are two <clears throat> skeletons in the back still shooting bows and arrows. And Breck and the Barrack have sort of uh, got their own whole fight going on against, well, guess what? Exact same fight above you. So uh, what do you want to do, Thron? Uh, well, I'm still fairly <coughs> clear-minded. So I'm going to step around this champion here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shut up take- the flanky flank. All right. And by step, you mean stride. Pick up the conga line uh, position. I think you mean step, right? Well, it doesn't matter. Joran, he... Uh, yeah. Oh, you, okay. Oh, you, I, I've been you sucking him up. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Joran provoked yeah. a tackle opportunity with a spell, and then... Uh, so the guy's down his reaction. Perfect. So. Perfect. Okay, Thrawn, with the glowing, radiant light of uh, Saren Ray bursting forth from Joran's spear, um, you quickly spin to the back of the creature, and you have now flanked it. All right. Let's go, buddy. Eight Bring fist. It. You are now Eight raging. Eight fist around to the back of his head. All right. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Get a good get a good hit in there. Get a good hit. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a hit by one. Oh! <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh! Big Slow damage. Some good damage. And in one massive strike from the bar. <laughs> You're just ducking, weaving. That's why I like the barbarian so good. I take advantage of the distraction. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, in one massive swing from the hulking barbarian, uh, the bloodied skeletal champion is badly injured with just a single blow from uh, the barbarian. All right, Kaz, you got uh, one action left, buddy. What Seeing as that blow went through, we're going to go map attack. All right. Map attack! <laughs> map attack! <laughs> oh, I was almost there. That's All right. like critical role. <laughs> now, remember, Kaz, you've got hero points, but you also can tap into that rage. Oh. I feel like, though, in the moment, I'm not like. All right. I'm not. I've been beat up a little bit. But I respect. It's just me. Great role playing, Kaz. I respect it. All right. Great RPG. <laughs> Great RPG, and Kaz. All right, um, Thrawn, your turn is over, and that means it is the bloodied skeletal guard's turn. All right, here we go. Um, Barrick, I think you're going to get killed, buddy. What? Bye, Barrick. Oh, shit. If he gets killed, he's, he might come back as undead Barrick. Uh, Barrick, Barrick is just Bloody getting Barrick. Bloody Barrick. Oh, All right. that's so dope. All right, that misses. Oh. All right, bloodied skeletal champion in fight, in combat with Barrick. Uh, Turns around to kill Barrick. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> all right uh it's gonna step to here Ooh, and it's gonna never skeleton it's gonna uh, it does not like the dance it's gonna step it's gonna attack 
Oh, it just misses. And uh, yeah, it's going to raise its shield. Of course. Pulls a right. three and just misses. Yep. All right, Droga. All right, Droga. So now you can see that the combat is starting to kind of uh, spin around you because of the enhanced light from the magic weapon that Jor Joran has placed into his spear. You can see that there are two archers to the south of you. There's a skeletal champion right in your midst. And then just above you, Barak and Breck are involved with two more archers as well as a skeletal champion that's beginning to make his way in, closing in on sort of a, of a pincer attack. But Breck has sort of, uh, well, Breck and Barak, I guess, have sort of plugged that northern hole. So, all right. All right. What is it going to be, buddy? command Barak to step into this spot. Okay. Uh, he is going to use uh, bear support. Air support. Is that like a, a hug? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like a I real. I got you, brother. Like so, a, like a hug with his claws. <laughs> well, it, it, you know what it is. It's only if I strike. Yeah, it's it's the it's bear. It's the bear, bear waiting to see when 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 he strikes. So there's two ways you could think of this. The bear support is the bear is commanded so that when the enemy is hit by an arrow, it like knows that that moment is distracted and the creature can do automatic damage. Doesn't have to roll to attack. The other way to think of it is that when the arrows strike, the bear pushes the arrow in with his the arrow. <laughs> Definitely the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot more. Right. Much more thematic. Lord of the Rings style. Right, that's, that's, that's more like, Lord, like of Lord of the Rings. Just like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> move in with my second action. Okay. And I quick draw out my hammer. Ooh. Oh, All right. And we are going to... Hammer time. Smack him. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hit. Nice. Uh, 24 nice. hit. Good. Oh, oh yeah. Damage. Four damage. But I did strike him. Yes, you so did. So Barrick, Barrick gets to do his 1d8 slashing damage. So that's oh, another four damage. Okay, so. All right, he takes no damage. Oh, it's, from the slashing? Yes, it's below Damn. his slashing resistance penetration, so he takes yeah. nothing. All right. You did he, your best, Barrick. He claws at him, and he just passes right between his rib cage. I'm sorry. <sighs> um, Bludgeoning. Does, <laughs> does nothing. All right, uh, Droga is done. Breck. All right, well, Brex is going to continue the melee on this uh, bloody skeletal champion and try and take it out. Got it. Especially now that he's no longer in the in the darkness, you fool! No, he is he is now in the radiant glow of uh, Joran's light. And so hopefully he... my aim will be more steady as I'm not dodging multiple arrows flying at my head. Yep. There... So here comes the bone battle axe first. Give him the bone. The bone battle axe oh, misses, ooh. but as we all know... It is simply a distraction for the hatchet. Oh! Yes! Oh Every time. Every time. It is so good. It Every is so time. good. Oh, break it hard. Okay, Every so time. critical 31 uh, and then 20 damage with the, oh. with, the, with the hatchet. Does that get through his slashing resistance, Derek? Uh, well, he, he's gonna take he's gonna take 15. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, good hatchet. Yeah, uh, you start like petting it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. The skeletal champion drops to near death. There's a f Tim. The bone axe seems to shimmer and has a flare of light. Uh, oh. it, as the mystical tipping of, of Rick S. Starts, yeah. to it, <laughs> starts to infuse into it. It shines a little brighter suddenly. Tim's like, I'll meet you halfway, chat. You can bring up, you come this way. I'll come this way. We'll meet halfway. Um, every every to, tip uh... gets a crit. No, no, no. Here, hold, hold a sec. Hold a sec. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, so right now, the goal for it to become uh, sentient, or I should say the... Uh, the uh, the goal f amount that it needs to become sentient is uh is one uh, is uh, one fifty um, and I'm gonna change it <laughs> to uh, to lower it down to one forty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> it was uh it, that was that was too powerful. Um, here we go. Uh, you know what? I am going to use my last action to make. A recall knowledge check with occultism to see if I know anything about these things. Our skeletons. From my trainings. I don't Got know it. if it applies, but I'm going to try. Got it. Does he get a bonus from his I don't know nothing. You don't know anything, It's a fey. Sir. And that is the yeah, end of my turn. It is entirely possible that the, this creature is indeed a fey. Um, in which case... It takes bonus damage from slashing, guys! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, tip goal has been reduced to 140. Um, Breck, your turn is done. Good crit. And now a bunch of guardsmen are going to go uh, from the rear. You, pff, I mean, we're just going to keep doing it, Kaz. You're not flat-footed this time, buddy. 
But uh, a bunch of bow shots come into you. So one. My back is totally. Oh, no. no. Oh. 20. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 you led that off, by the way, by saying my back is to the, <laughs> <laughs> the critical. All right. Uh, Ooh. Oh, Ooh. 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 Big crit, good. big crit from a bow. By the oh. way, if you want to know why goblin warriors are broken, that's the reason they have short bows. They, um, 17 oh, damage I look to Thrawn. <laughs> All right, Thrawn. There's like an arrow sticking through my shoulder now. Yeah. The other one does the exact same attack routine. Here it comes. One hit. Just one hit. Okay. All right. Six. Jeez. They're really (laughs) shipping through that massive bank Uh, of HP. All right. Thrawn is (laughs) near death after Uh a. This whole story is about him. (laughs) After a stunning, (laughs) after a stunning array of attacks, Thrawn is near death as the uh, powerful archers unload. Do I happen to know which one was the one that crit me? Uh, this one, Kaz. Okay. <laughs> He's like t- <laughs> taking a mental note. <laughs> like, I got you. you. The <laughs> remembers. All right. This skeletal guard closes in. It is going to attack Barrick. No, Barrick. Barrick Dunbarian. Oh, oh, he's in the flank. Not good. Oh. Ruff, hit. Row, raggy. oh he is Almost a, a crit. <laughs> Almost a crit. It's another six, eight damage. Oh my gosh! Man. No, damage is hot tonight, right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, Locked that into a trap. <laughs> uh, that is uh, all of the uh, guards. So now we start over with the skeletal champion. Um, but even though Thron is near death, uh, you haven't really done anything, Thron. But you did just crit him. So yeah, he's gonna attack you. Oh boy. Attack me? Yeah. He turns, he attacks. 24 to hit. Oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 he's dead. This is and I hit night. the ground finally. Oh. You forget uh, who raised you. Who hit you? Intense. All right, Thrawn is unconscious oh. and drops to the ground. The skeletal champion whips and turns onto Joran and attacks him with a follow-up map attack and map misses. Attack. And then okay, he's going to raise his shield, standing between the cleric and the barbarian. Oh boy. Ah, but this is Pathfinder 2. <laughs> All right, let that me... doesn't actually matter. Let me move Thrawn, actually, to above the bloody skeletal champion. Unfortunately, Thrawn, your initiative does get pushed back there. Um, all right, Joran, it's your turn. Remember, this guy does have attack of opportunity. Yep, I'm going to kick off my shield, and then Joran will spin around the guy. Actually, I could just step. That works. You could step, yeah. Well, actually, no. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna step. What? I'm sorry. What's going on? I'm walking. I'm not stopping. Oh, you're provoking attack of opportunity. Yes. He definitely takes it. Okay. Uh, low numbers. Low numbers. Low numbers. Low numbers. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. Stop. Stop at a. Stop at a critical hit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. He is going Bankrupt. to bankrupt. <laughs> Twenty-two. Ooh. Is it? All right. Yep. Even with the shield, that would be a hit. Man, oh, the damage tonight. Jeez. All right. Okay. Oh, Your geez. reaction is up, Jordan. Group B is not in. Yeah, good but state. my reaction would be to bring up my shield, but that doesn't do anything. Got it. Okay. So I'll just take it to the face. Okay. Um, and I cast a spell like right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh. Joran makes a plea to Saren Ray. His uh, uh, hand touches the spear, taking the fire and the light, and he slams the fire into Thrawn's chest. Very nice. All right. So we're going to use the two action healing. Well, that's good. Ooh, all right. Uh, Thrawn, you're healed for 14, buddy. Nice. All right. Uh, so Thron, you're back up. Uh, and yep, that's casted. I'm done. All right, Thron, you are still prone, and all your weapons are scattered. But you're an ape barbarian. It doesn't <laughs> yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, so your nails right. fall off. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, up north, this guy closes in on to Breck. Breck, this guy's attacking. Yeah, buddy. Uh, he moves and then he attacks with his scimitar. And then he oh. attacks with his uh, scimitar. It's a critical hit. Oh, oh, second one. 
on the All second right. one as it comes in, and it's 12 damage. Oh, I'm not selected. There we go. All right, and that's his turn, so that's it for him. All right, the other guy in front of you. Ooh, let's see. Breck, he's going to keep attacking you. He's yep. near death. <sighs> Die! Die, living! And then he just hacks you with his long sword. Gets a 20! That Dang. hits. Yeah. Oh, I didn't target anybody. AC's outside. 19. Yeah. And that is a six damage. First time okay. you get a little max. Still, still up! Here. <laughs> Map attack! Miss. Oh. Oh! Oh! Don Donnie just tipped $100. Oh, my oh, goodness. My goodness. <laughs> Gracious. He's like, oh, it looks like a TCK. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds Whoa. like the hatchet needs to res the party. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's Turned an infusion the of energy. Um, and suddenly <laughs> the hatchet flares into life, beginning an awakening. Um, I mean, that is a massive tip. Thank you. Uh, incredibly, incredibly thank you there. <laughs> the hatchet, hatchet turns evil. evil. <laughs> <laughs> it executes the party. The story all along is that the hatchet it was a lich and it wanted you to bring it here so that it could resurrect us all <sighs> yes. as its new champions <sighs> this is the lich's I mean, Donnie is part of the, the former dark council oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean uh, I mean it's hard for me to, re to resist that um, <laughs> the hatchet the hatchet waits to see if, if Breck is worthy of him <laughs> it's um, like you gotta live boy <laughs> Um, the uh, the hatchet begins to grow. The the powerful rage and spiritual energy of this place begins to infest it as the uh, the, the, the 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 memories of the Kellid people here, uh, Breck. The the countless uh, ancestor spirits that still try to dwell in this place want to come and help you, but the powerful rage seems to be clouding their vision as well. Um, mm -hmm. I have no idea Dirt what's going to happen. More on deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Droga, buddy, it's not looking good. <laughs> Accurate. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to uh, try to kill this uh, bloody skeleton champion in front of me. Yep. With my hammer. We're going to swing down with all my might. Hey, uh, him you hit. Nice. For a big seven damage. Guess what? Is he at eight? Yes. Oh, he is exactly Woo! at zero. That <laughs> good <laughs> mace bludgeoning damage. All there right. Go. The hammer brings down and the champion shatters and collapses into a bloody pile of bones. Breck the hatchet. It's still trying to decide which way to go. <laughs> it I'm goes, feed me in yeah. my head. <laughs> um, Step. Yeah. Um, this is not my hunt prey. Yeah. But I will take my second strike. Yep. With my agile weapon. Yeah, yep. Uh, uh, oh, so close. I'm going to hear my wait, 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 wait. Stop. Which one were you attacking? The, the one to the right. Oh, is it in the darkness? No, which one were you attacking? You got uh, I you, targeted you it. It does not look like that. You targeted it to does me. Does not look like uh, it. Oh, it's on my screen. It says it missed by one. AC oh, sixteen a, bloody yeah. skeleton guard. Wit to the right, right in front of uh, Breck. Is right. The one right so, to okay. The right. Then you missed because you did not target the one that you're. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you missed because that one is not flanked. Okay, that's right. Correct. Okay, yeah. and so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, reroll that for the hero point. All right, so that seven is a seventeen. Which gives and you a total of uh, uh, 23. 23. Yep. So that is a hit. So, so nice. we're in regular damage here. Yep. And maximum nine damage with my light hammer. Four hit point oh, guard explodes. So much better than the arrows. <laughs> <laughs> the creature Sorry, collapses. Barak. <laughs> Barak, that's all the actions I have this turn. <laughs> uh, it's okay. All right. Well, Droga steps in big time. Come on, guys. Breck. Uh, All right, uh, I think you got this, bud. Double slice. <laughs> Breck oh rushes God. over to the aid of the recently fallen barbarian and Joran. It just leaves me. <laughs> you got a four hit point archer in front of you and Barrack, man. Yeah, I think you're okay. There's think... three people over here. One of them's down. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. I'm just... My character Stone goes, what? Is going to come you at be, the, uh, Do you want to be one step to your right? 
Can you make it? Um, yes, I can be there yeah. without. There we yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Jordan already provoked this guy's attack of opportunity, so you can be wherever you want, bro. Oh, sick. Did you move right. or he did you sudden square. charge? Uh, I moved because okay. it was within thirty feet. Fortunately. Got it. So okay, I'm double it. slicing instead of double char or sudden charging. Got it. All right, Breck. Well, you set up a flank on the skeletal champion. His shield is raised, so that cancels each other out, and. Yeah. You get a so the, looks like the battle axe gets 26. in there. Oh, you hit by nine. Almost points. a crit. Almost a crit. Hit by nine. And then because it's double slice, we're rolling the bone hatchet anyway. Yep. Just in case the thing somehow lives. All right, both oh, hit. Both oh, hit. Great. There's so a spark. the battle axe with the 26, almost a crit, does <laughs> right. damage. Well, they're both the hatchet. They're both gonna take five off. So uh yeah. that the first one does eleven damage, which is six. And then uh, the hatchet. And then the hatchet damage. Oh, Can it finish the job? Oh, of course, oh, pretty good. The hatchet. That's four points of damage. It's dead. <laughs> 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 the hatchet fails. <laughs> Tim, as the hatchet fells the skeletal champion, you hear a strange whisper in the back of your voice. Or sorry, you strange to hear a strange whisper in the back of your head. More, more, more. <laughs> A dark, evil voice. <laughs> Hatchet thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> you thought we were gone, oh, but we never good. went anywhere. <laughs> I'm voice. just thinking of uh, Vash's sword from Warbreaker, if anyone knows that book in the chat. I know there are some fans, Sanderson uh, fans. So, <laughs> All right, well, Kaz, it's worked so far. They're just going to keep plugging you full of arrows. So here we go. Oh, no. sure. He's sure. on the ground. Does he get a bonus to that? Actually, no. <laughs> but I rolled. <laughs> I rolled. Sucks. I rolled double. Wow. Amazing. I rolled double that one. So there is that. Um, now it's evening out. <laughs> um. All right. So that guy's done. Uh, and then uh, my other guy up top, he is going to. Uh, I guess he's going to just hack into Barrack. Die, bear! Let's as he, as he brings, oh, it's a no two. No way! Oh, uh, it's a miss. No it's a, way! It's a, is it a triple miss? It's a triple miss. Yes. Uh, all right, last. I tanked those archers this entire fight, by the way. <laughs> but last but not least, this skeletal guard is going to unleash. You guessed it, a fuselage of arrows. That's nineteen. Will hit though. Uh, ooh, maybe maybe we will get some hits there. All right. These are going for Thrawn. Uh, we got a 19. That's a hit. We got an 18. That's a hit. And we got a 13. That hits. So you still oh. took two hits. That's Six. Really good. Shoot him no, Six. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh my. All right, Derek. I know you were trying to code something on this server earlier. Did you just fuck up the dice? <laughs> He's still alive. He's oh, alive. Oh, man. There's a lot of max yet. damage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That was so brutal. That's, um, good. That's good damage, right? There. Especially for an archer. Breck, the voice whispers. Like, they are All weak. The now is the time. <laughs> <laughs> My left Breck. arm starts raising on its own. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> or yes. Um, <laughs> All right, well, believe it or not, that is it. And now, because the skeletal champions are dead, it goes Thrawn, Joran, Droga, Breck, and then the three skeletal guards. Thrawn, so. we're hit point buddies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Thrawn, what's it going to be? Just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because there's two of you, and you both right. have two hit points. Two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Math is tight. Uh, Math is tight in the chat. Math is tight. <laughs> <laughs> I sudden charge. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. There Did you we stand go, up right here. Oh yeah, you got to. Yeah, yeah, stand up. Well, no, that's what he's saying. He's standing Wait, up and he sudden charge. Sudden charge. charge. Stand yeah. up, Beautiful. sudden charge. Beautiful. Yep. Targeting this. I am full fucking fucking rage mode right now. Yep, I got it. <clears throat> Bring down the massive ape fist. Oh well, well oh, this seems no, very no, this, no, seems, no. this seems very appropriate for you. Uh -oh. <laughs> Where's the rage? This Kaz? is the full rage. I've been knocked out. There's an arrow sticking out of me. I swing, <laughs> but like so, I see that, and there's blood rage. So here's here's the question, Cass. You have a hero point available. Do you use it, or do you want to just use one of your free ones? Oh, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, this is blood rage. <laughs> okay. Point. All right. This is blood rage point. <laughs> Love it. All right. Reroll it, Cass. <laughs> Here all right, so, all oh, right, so yeah. uh, that's there a hit. Are. Roll your damage. Yep. Kaz, I think your minimum damage uh, destroys this thing, so you're okay. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Excellent. Uh, Whoa. There we go. Okay. Uh, 12 damage uh, kills it. <laughs> Boom! You just dis <laughs> destroy it, and it turns into dust. All right. That was the one that crit me, right? Uh, yes. I think they all crit you at some point. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they all crit. They, and they all, all roll max damage, damage when they when they hit you. Uh, Joran, you're yeah, alive you're, somehow. 
Jordan uh, moseys on over here because he doesn't have any of these fancy feats that these guys have. Okay. So uh, about 40 for- seconds later, he decides to show up and he just kind of shanks the skeleton of his spear. Got it. Go for it. Uh, oh, yeah, you get a plus one. All right, buddy. Just waiting for it. Uh, that, that, that's an 11. Going to channel a hero point in that? Yeah, that seems appropriate. Go. Ah, hero- heroism. <laughs> Put this fight to bed. <laughs> I'm so I'm so heroic. I, I, so heroic. I know I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the ins- I'm feeling inspired. Just like CR. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a hit. I, I was waiting there for the one, but okay. Uh, roll your damage. It should automatically kick in. Yep. There we go. All right. Well, nice. guess. Here's the beautiful thing about it. They have five, exact. They have right. five, it just killed it exactly. Oh, it with kills it right. exactly. With a, they have five piercing resistance. It takes four damage. It has four hit points. It's dead. All right. Good job. Uh, Droga. Amazing. Clean up sign, buddy. I'm going to try. I I'm can't s- even see what's going on up yeah. there anymore. I'm gonna <laughs> oh, that's true. You move, <laughs> you move so far away, Aaron. It's like all in Actually, darkness. <laughs> I can't. I can't see. So do I have to like make a, a you have to, check? It's DC eleven. You You're in complete. No, he knows <laughs> oh, what he knows fuck. what's he knows what square it's in. Oh, he just yeah. doesn't. He just yeah. doesn't. Nope. <laughs> You're just attacking right. in the darkness. <laughs> so that's first miss, and then I guess I have to go for it again. It's what? the first miss. <laughs> there comes the second miss. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> blind up here, guys. Yeah, it's almost like fighting in the dark is not a good idea. Breck. You should stand in the dark. <laughs> that way, it can shank you while you're flat footed. No, nope. that's yeah, right. where I'm at. The, do- the darkness clouds your actions. Now is the time. No one would know. Blame it on the skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Strike, oh, double man. strike. I will guide you, Drew. <laughs> you know what to do. No, I resist. Come on, Breck. I, uh, Breck, get down. But, but I, don't know what I'm with the hatch. I, I drop the one. battle axe so I can pull out a torch so Droga can see it. Nice. There. All right, so uh, Tim, uh, Three, one action, one action to one, pull it out, and then one action two, probably to, to light uh, it. it. Yeah, and then uh, I can see him now. Yes. Uh, I am going to, what is the range here? I might be able to throw my hatchet at him. Oh, nice. 40 nice. feet. Yeah. Well, remember the range is at what point you start to get a penalty. So you can actually throw it like a hundred feet or something right. crazy, but I don't so, know what the range on a hatchet uh, is. I yeah, thrown the, 10 feet. Correct. Okay. Well, that's a lot of range. Let me that's get a yeah, lot of penalty. A lot. Never Let, mind. Yeah. Uh, I that, thought it was 20. I, so. I think, I think it's like minus six, Tim, and he's got cover. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. So I'll it's just the hatchet. move up It'll so crave. people can see him. All right, there you go. Oh, right. look at there yeah, he that's is. The end of my turn. All right, should've, there you go. I should have delayed. He can shoot us all now. But, all right. Know. Ah, it is my turn. I will bring down this. He's, for, for he's gonna kill everybody. <laughs> just... A smarter man would have delayed like the first round. Uh, this, this, ah, it don't matter. All right. Well, it don't matter. Uh, he's I'm, dead. I'm gonna delete him. All right, <laughs> he's done. All right. All right. Well, um, at long last. Uh, the vicious combat and vicious melee comes to an end um, as over uh, several intense rounds, the uh, the scouts of the broken uh, tusks uh, managed to overcome a flanking attack through rage-filled bloody skeletons, ancient Kelid warriors animated into undeath by the powerful evil of this place. Uh, How are you guys feeling? I, I feel fine. But uh, half the party got... <laughs> Talk. All right, yeah, we yeah. go back and sleep, and then after our that friends are brutally brutal. murdered, uh, we go play a different adventure. Um, well, now the good news is, uh, you guys can rest, but remember, in this ki- in this campaign, a day of rest, a day of rest has consequences because the burning Shoot. mammoths will continue to make their approach, and of course, you also will potentially lose food and morale and the things of that nature. No, I, um, I think well, we let's definitely at least get, gather march down here. towards a TPK. Uh, I mean, to be clear, I think we just narrowly avoided a TPK. We, we got Donnie in the chat. Close. Donnie, if you tip, I won't heal and we'll just run into the next encounter. How about that? <laughs> Donnie, please, I put too much work into this. Don't do it. Um, oh, Derek, dude. that's like egging him on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. This is a $250 tip. Yeah, right. All right, well, oh, the power of Saren Ray cannot reach this dark, hateful cave. Breck, uh, um, those boys. <laughs> Breck, um, nonetheless, Breck, you do notice a change. The, the bone axe at, at, the, at the end there, you could have swore it was like, throw me. Like you had this strange urge. <laughs> do it anyway. It's a bad idea, but do it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, uh, so, so 
for everybody at home, uh, because uh, we reached the tip goal, uh, uh, we are going to start down the line of turning uh, Tim's, not his battle axe, by the way, made of metal, but his bone <laughs> bone hatchet that does what, D4, Tim, or D6 or something? Um, D6, right? Uh, D6, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, damage, and we are going to start turning that into an intelligent item. However, as the vast majority of that came out, it, it's torn. See, 33% of it came from Rick, who is a, a virtue, a paragon of virtue and of goodness. And the other two-thirds came Dark from... Council. Basically, there are going to be two wolves inside of this thing. and uh, <laughs> It's actually kind of cool. <laughs> it's going to be fighting for the, for the, for the glory of, uh, of, uh, of Breck's soul. But, um, it's excellent. Can I, right. uh, before we... I know we're probably going to take a break here soon, but... We are going to take I, a break, uh, yeah. Can I take a look inside this casket that's on here this wheelbarrow yeah absolutely droga um so droga let, let before you go and and do something horrible like you oh, always you're gonna do, try to heal can i heal some people patch, yeah don't try to advance the adventure while we're all I'm almost dead well just re- <laughs> just remember <laughs> as uh, be having fun i would like him to continue play if he's interested uh just remember that your heal checks do take 10 minutes um so if you do make a couple uh, heal checks that could be 20 or 30 40 that's- minutes I mean, whatever. You can kill us if you want this one. Just letting you know that that is a, that is an Derek, option. Just to let you know, Kaz is at two hit points, so I don't, he won't be able to play the game. I just didn't know if you wanted to. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you wanted to maybe back out of the cave. It's fine. We killed everything. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this feels like some bad juju, Jordan. You know what? You know what? I respect it. The, the entrance is right behind you. If you need to beat it, right right there. It. we we'll almost died run. outside the cave. So it's like, come on, <laughs> nothing here is safe. Just, just man up, boys. All right, uh, Jordan. We gotta don't get give in the hate. Don't let it conquer your hearts. Wow. Love. All right. I, uh, I, I don't. Even, I reattach his arm and give him a new spine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, like he needs he needs one laying around. Yeah, really you, good just, you just you do bar his his arm is too broken. It's been shattered in three places. You just take one of the undead bones and stick yeah, it in there. Just show it in there. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's it's. It, I'm trained in medicine. This is within my wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> this is some Warhammer 40k medicine right here. Are we, are we rolling here? Or am I lagging out again? Uh, right now you're um, lagging out. Yeah, I don't see anything. If he makes a heal check on me, can I make a heal check on me? Uh, I forget how that. N- no, once you've been treat wounded, you cannot be treat okay. wounded for an hour. Okay. I need to treat wounds on you because my God's power is limited, but bandages are infinite. Hmm? Got it. Especially, out. Especially so then. Cave. Okay. So are you going to treat wound everyone, or do we want to split it up? Because I can. I mean, treat I can't treat wounds myself, but I can treat wounds. You can't. You can't treat wounds yourself. No, because I already did. It's oh, been, it's been seven minutes. Got it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you're 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 saying because of the hour cooldown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Wreck I'm, is also. I'm, I'm just waiting for this thing to load. Sorry. Uh, yeah, lot, lots of people need it. Points we all know. Like guidance, you dog. Um, <laughs> oh, Rick S just tipped again. No, oh, well, he's trying to make it more pure. He's trying to get the uh, purified. Uh, that <laughs> this this one was a real tip, like not the uh, super chat. This is a really like, nice one too. Yeah. Good. All right. <laughs> The two wolves are now of even strength. <laughs> there are two wolves in our chat. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. That is fantastic. Thank Love you, Rick. Um, so while we wait for the... Uh, <laughs> and Donnie's laughing. <laughs> I, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with Smith's... Uh, but yeah, oh, super, sure, and, Jor, and Jor did super chat. Uh, heals, resolve, medicine, checks allowed. Move forward with urgency. Um, thank you, Jor. Thank you, Jor. Yeah, I don't know. It's just... it's. Let me, let me just try off my character sheet. Because you guys are getting my chat messages. So. Oh, oh, we, 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 oh, we, we were too, we were naive and we were young and we were, we were silly. You know, we what? were, we were sweet children of summer. We did not understand the allure the Dark Council has. Rick S with a fifty dollars tip. I'm willing oh, to, gosh. I'm willing to tip to turn the hatchet evil. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. Oh well, no, that's it, boys. Now it's hundred well. percent evil. I mean, I, yeah, I, there I, are I, two I, wolves I, in you. They're both evil. <laughs> Yep. Poor, poor Jorabite's trying to help out. Oh. Yeah. In the <laughs> chat, where are you taking this campaign, people? You know, the same place you took the last one. Yep. <laughs> but no Jeez. wheels this time. It's very, very <laughs> it's very procedural. All right. Um uh I I can I I it's it's fine, George. Oh, and, you oh, there you oh, go. Oh, 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 it was a dramatic oh. wait for a nat 20. Okay. 
Beautiful medicine check. All right. It really was the bones of the skeleton. (laughs) (laughs) Got all these fresh parts around. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, just I wish I had the freaking macro working because it has the actual diros with it. I know. You could also just tap 2d8. And yeah, I, just, I don't actually remember what it is. I want to do it the way Foundry does it. No, it's fine. I mean, no, I, I literally nice. don't remember how to play this game. 2d10 plus 8 right now? Is it 2d8 plus? Is no, that right? It's, you have the 2d10? It, well, no, it's it's that's healing hands. That's for uh, This is treat wounds, yeah. It's 2d8. Oh, that's right. It's just straight 2d8. Okay. And then if you crit, it's 4d8, which you did. Yep. Nice. Um, But um, so double this, cast. All right, so Kaz, you're, nice. so Kaz, you can you're healed. Is it plus anything? Sorry, Derek. Nope, it's not plus anything. Not okay. until you get to expert. And then Breck, I will do this to you as well. Sweet. <coughs> um. <coughs> poor Kaz, I'm sorry, buddy. Mm. You want to hero point that? You're healing hero point the the medicine check. Yeah, because otherwise we can't do anything, Derek. Oh, well, yeah, but what I mean, you could just take five hours and just heal everybody to full. Well, mm. because then the time. adventure and the plot will, will you get start us. off you, the monologue you started with was time is of the essence. Time is it, of the essence. It is of the essence. <laughs> we are we are RPGing uh, right listen, now. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. All right, Tim. There you go. Tim, you heal for six. Excellent. Jorah Jora wants us moving forward with urgency, guys. So we got to. Well. Um, All right. How I, bad I want to look that? at this 1332. You guys are still a mess. So this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, we're pretty well, beat. Well, hold on. Uh, hold on. I'm going to. Barrett needs a heal check too. Oh. Okay. Jory, Bob doesn't actually care about him, and he's going to let him die. But because he's named after me, I feel a certain amount of kinship oh, to him. Yeah. I mean, he's still. He was... <laughs> I appreciate Derek. Oh, yeah. He's he's probably still back, doing... but... It's yeah, fine. Yeah, Bar- you know what? Healing the bear is easy. He's far more. Okay. Uh, so Barrett is healed for ten. There, Bob. Right. Beautiful. Right. This, this is what right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna heal you guys, but then I'll be out spells. So then it doesn't matter that I'm at two hit points because I have no no value to add. Right. Or we just wait one hour and then everybody gets a second round of heal checks. Nope. Well, you guys could do you do that, and then then that hour. Let me go look at this basket over here. Like Drogo's going down to look at the basket. All right. Sounds good. In the dark. <laughs> No, no, uh, it's, oh, it's still light. Oh no, I actually have to. I have to turn down. Oh. I have to turn down yeah, Smith. My, Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I, I no longer have a magic weapon. He no longer MVP has magic. Uh, he no longer right. has magic weapon. It's uh, how's that torch looking? I take out a torch. I got torches. <laughs> there we go. That's back Here, to normal. You can you can take the one that I took out. When oh, I, thank uh, you. Bob, you can right click on your token, so, and there's a yep. little torch icon that'll turn on your torch if you have a torch available. I do. How long we've been in this cave now? Uh, it takes me ten minutes each time, right? Right. So you've been here for about thirty or forty minutes. Okay. So so it's only about. 10 more minutes until so your get, your heel check okay. is up again. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll um, wait. Yep, yeah. Let's fine. do another round. And... All right. So while you guys kind of take a moment to recover from your, your wounds and battle, Droga goes down south to check out this uh, uh, area. Mm. Interesting looking. All right. Um, Droga, the smashed remains of a wine cask lay scattered near the southern wall of this simple cavern. Um, there's also signs that there was uh, other gear here, water skins, wine skin, foods, rations, extra equipment, shovels, uh, uh, ropes. All of it has been torn apart and uh, and destroyed. It uh, looks like the uh, a couple of uh, porters, similar to the ones that you had seen with the lady before, um, had set up a camp here. Um, maybe, uh, sh- obviously, she was not aware of what was going on here, and uh, at some point during the night, they were set upon by horrific undead, and much like you did, <laughs> oh, <laughs> were almost destroyed to kill apart. But you notice that, you know, and when you, well, you've never I thought fought. there was something shiny in here. Earlier. Yeah, the, the cask had a metal band on ah, it and everything okay. like that. But uh, you could see here, though, that, you know, this destruction is beyond, not that you have a lot of experience with the undead, but it's very clearly that the undead, after, like, the people were killed, they kept, like, hacking at them. They, like, went out of their way to, like, destroy and tear this stuff apart. Oh, um, they're, like, literally, like, in a blood rage. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or, or, or they were filming Smash or Pass here. Mm. <laughs> and we know which way they went. They did, they did. All right, so uh, we'll get another round of heal checks uh, from Smith. Yep. We'll, we'll just, we'll take care of that. Um after the break. Uh, after the break. Um, we're going to take a quick, brief break. I've got 8.33 by clock. So we'll, we'll come back at 8.45. Um, and uh, 
we will uh, we'll pick it up there. We've got more of Red Cat Cave to explore. Uh, I want to say thank you again to everybody who tipped and donated, um, especially Rick and Donnie with those huge, massive tips. Um, when we come back, it's just Breck and our dead bodies around yeah. his feet. <laughs> All right, guys, we're ready to continue the uh, adventure. Yeah, when He's... Drogo went over to investigate, the hatchet murdered the... T- <laughs> yeah, he uh, first murdered the cleric. Uh, <laughs> Here's Brecky. You guys definitely, you guys, and by this I mean the chat, you guys definitely have a good way of keeping me on my toes. I was kind of like, okay, we're we're leaning into this whole meme of the of the hatchet is actually the character. Oh, it's intelligent. Oh, roll for comments, make it. But now you guys have to make it evil too. So, yeah. uh, all right, everybody. Um, I will. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be back in about uh, twelve minutes. Uh, we'll see you then, and we'll be uh, we'll be right back.
It was, uh, they fought bravely. Good. But, but Droga and Joran have met their demise at the hands of Brex Hex. <laughs> <laughs> they will not be with so this us. This is what happens. They will not be with us for the rest of their lives. Um, Thrawn has given in to the madness and has decided that uh, the hatchet is Lord. And now they will begin a death, death slaughter of the broken house. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, everybody is uh, doing some additional bio breaks. Um, Joran uh, did some heel checks while we were offline there just to save us the tedium of rolling heel checks. If you've been there, you know what's up. Um, so the group encountered a very difficult fight there. Uh, definitely severe, not quite extreme. Uh, and it went really bad for them. And I rolled like a champ. And so they are pretty beat up. Now, obviously, uh, the players could decide to retreat back to a, an encampment or even back to the following and rest and recover, regaining hit points in camp through medicine and heal checks and gaining back their spells. However, the group does need to be mindful that each day that they take to do a recovery and long rest is another day that the burning mammoths grow closer and they're not exactly sure how far away they are. It's another day that the Burning Mammoths have to maybe outflank them and move north to cut them off as they move towards the Tusk Mountains. And it's another day that food, morale, the strength of the herd, uh, and probably even probably not the population, but the, certainly the food and the morale could potentially dwindle. Um, and so these are all legitimate concerns. So the group is going to have to balance the needs of, you know, the Pathfinder 2 needs of their characters they need spells and hit points, but they're going to have to balance that against the realities of this situation. This isn't like your standard game where you can just, you know, go back to town every five minutes um, because if the if the heroes take too much time trying to get through Red Cat Cave, it could have dire consequences for the Broken Tusk following. So that's going to be... Ron, what, what are your needs? That's going to be important to, to take, uh, to take, keep in mind as we go through this. Um, <coughs> the blood of my enemies. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right, so we are back, and we've got uh, about we've got about an hour and, and some change to get through this. Uh, keep in mind, for those of you settling in here for the second half, we're going to have a poll near the end of the session to vote for MVP. That MVP is going to get to start next session with an extra hero point. Um, and uh, uh, we appreciate everybody hanging out with us and enjoying the, uh, the crew tonight. It's been a crazy wild night so far. We'll see what more we get into. All right, so quick update. Um, everybody has gotten... Uh, hit points back, but Joran and Breck are still looking a little rough around the edges. Um, so Joran, since you guys are about to explore and you just did another round of healing, you could theoretically do two more checks and then you would just be at the start of your next hour cooldown, if that makes any sense. If you want to do one more for you and Tim. Sure. But then can I do one for myself as well? Uh, you can, you can, just don't crit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You, you got one hit yeah. point. <laughs> one hit point. Yeah, good point. I'll hold. <laughs> you could he critically fails and hurts himself. <laughs> All right. I eat a bandage. I have the bleed effect on me now. Awesome. <laughs> I think Sorry. being I think being treat wounds is uh cures you of that. Where... The hardest thing for me is to find there we go. Proficiencies. Proficiencies. The character shake. You never find the skill list. It's actually a very common problem. They're changing it in the next. Oh yeah, yeah. the hands. Yeah, yeah. It makes no sense why it's, it is what it is in the sheet, but <clears throat> once we update, yeah, <clears throat> game over. Yeah. Oh, nice one. All right, I will heal that. Boom, very boom, nice. Boom, boom. And then I force feed a bandage down Breck's throat. Um, yum, 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 medicine. Yum, yum. It's good for you. It feels so good. All right. Boom. There you go. You got it. My innards are what were damaged. So this Ooh. is fantastic. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. That nice. That's amazing. Yeah. Holy. Wow. That was a big wow, That's crap, it. That's dude. all we get, boys. All right. That's exactly <laughs> all right. what I needed, bro. All right. When you hit this. zero, it's zero. Yeah. That's how well Joran knows Breck. <laughs> all right. Heals him to perfect. Well, at least hole. we know the narrow path is the way we want to go now. Uh, yeah, well. All right. So, uh, well, to be fair, if you'd gone north, you had just been flanked from the rear. That's true. Fair, fair. All right. Well, uh, so Joran, you cast a couple spells to in that downtime uh, to get everybody healed up in a short order of time, along with some medicine checks. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you are out of spells. 
My healing font is completely depleted. I have one first level spell left, which of course is a magic one. All right, sounds good. Ooh, Secondly, nice. remember, gentlemen, if you have a torch out, that means you can't have something else out. Uh, Jordan, I torch. I am only wearing using my hatchet right now. Okay, I have a <laughs> torch. Um, Bob, you can theoretically because you could drop it and then still shoot your bow, but. Um, I buy a torch. Yeah. All right. So, and Jordan, you don't I have need to worry to put about my it. Hammer away real because quick of, too. because of your light spell. All right, Jordan. Derek, I will be. Uh, Jordan will be cautious in his old age and will be guarding himself as he progresses deeper in. Got it. You're gonna have that shield up. Uh huh. All right. You can go ahead and raise your shield on you then, there, Mister Smith. Thrawn will move to the front. I'm feeling invigorated. Okay. I am. Uh... Yeah, hey, you know what? If you didn't lose all those hit points, I just gave you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the guy of 21 armor class kind of poke his head in. Okay, Mr. 16 AC, is that okay with you? It's 18. It's 18. It's 18. No, no, I'll be scouting. Oh, that's true. Once he starts raging, that's true. Yeah. Is it yeah, scouting? Is not going to rage? <laughs> scouting gives you plus one to everyone, gets a plus one circumstance bonus to AC yeah. if you're scouting. I'm going to be scouting. All right, so Droga is going to keep his eyes peeled, ready to get everybody a plus one circumstance bonus to their next initiative check. All right. Um, so. You all move into this uh, chamber, which, as I described before, um, was filled with debris and bones and amongst uh, a bunch of other things that many creatures have come in here and died and uh, been sort of hacked together and pieced together over the years. Um, it looks like there may have been instances where some creatures, perhaps bears or smilodons, uh, you know, maybe try to make a lair here, uh, you know, but then event inevitably the undead were surged, that malevolence bubbled up and undead warriors or something darker and more sinister came and killed them, uh, leaving nothing here now but bones and the remains of the dead. The Kellid paintings on the wall continue to glow under the flickering lights of Joran's torch. As you come in now, you see that most of the paintings have been, um, there's like flecks of mica that have been daubed into the painting. So they actually seem to, to, to sort of reflect the light and sparkle a little bit under Joran's uh, illumination, showing more signs of the Kellid people forming fo followings and leading their people around the realm of the Mammoth Lords, and that the annual migration of the burning mammoths carrying with them the sacred primordial flame, that route literally sort of traced out a path of fertility and verdance and growth, and each passing season, it like almost kept pushing out the boundary of that um, of that sort of aura of, Wait, of, of circle. Yeah. Is that like a, when you're saying describing the route, is it like a literal route, like a map of the route? No, no, it's just, okay. it's just figurative, but, um, but yeah, it's showing that basically the burning mammoths, literally their annual migration is like by carrying the primordial flame around this thing over and over and over again, it like laid down this sort of magical protection that in, you know, invigorated the land with, life-giving energy, which is how you can have a land of dinosaurs and stuff in the middle of the frozen north, right? Um, so it's definitely... This makes me consider if the primordial flame has not done this cycle in generations, well, not generations, years, decades, if the land itself dying, hunting has grown scarcer over the years, the winters have grown colder. We tend to think only of our own misfortunes, but... Joran places a hand on one of the murals as he kind of follows the story with his hand. What if life itself is ending here? This may be larger than the sins of your ancestors, the weakness of our people. Yeah, if these cave paintings so, are correct, then, you know, the people who stole the primordial flame weren't necessarily they didn't it's not that they didn't want to go fight demons it's that they knew that this primordial flame was literally the the beating heart mm. of this realm and it's not a weapon when you get our heart back with the heart of moana <laughs> right. uh, uh, same plot moana. basically bob T yeah <laughs> you nailed it defeat <laughs> defeat by the What's way the i definitely would not put it past these authors that they're just stealing it from moana so that's okay yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> i mean they've got moving paintings on a wall man. it sounds like a certain somebody to me <laughs> uh, that's actually 100 percent true okay. um all right what can i say except you're welcome well <laughs> 
Damn it. That was good. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob getting a hero point. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. Well, folks, and remember, guys, we have about an hour left. Um, uh, Donnie says, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Blame your overhunting and living in <laughs> excess on the poor little flame. Um, all right. Well, the, the torch light, uh, or I should say the magical torch light coming from Joran's spear raised above him, uh, illuminates a chamber that was previously filled with undead guardians. Um, it's probably likely that they normally aren't out this far but they may have been here recently because they surged forward because of the activity in the cave from Lady Ardisa uh, and her campment, and they kind of just, you know, maybe haven't fallen back yet. All right. You see that there is a, a, a large, uh, almost twice as large as it seems like it normally should be, uh, oh. cave. Um... <laughs> like for those that don't know, Derek blows all his maps up. <laughs> like this feels like a good size cave. I'm like, okay. it does. Yeah. And I'm like, oh wait, it's supposed to be a freaking closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that hallway where Breck and Barrick and Droga were all fighting, in reality is a five foot square. Yeah. Impossible. <laughs> Derek and I were looking at the A V maps earlier today. Oh and we're God. just like, yeah, by the way, that's a 15 foot right. Room. Any, two large creatures and a 15 foot one. Right. Any, anytime you see a, a two by two grid in the real map, that's just one five foot square. Um, okay. So if some of the things, some of the art looks a little offsized, that's why. Okay. I'm but, keeping uh, pretty wary for any skeletons I see laying around. Yep. <laughs> uh, I will keep that in mind there, Kaz. All right. So Joran's still in the lead with the torch, with his shield up. Bob, you're still scouting. Absolutely. All right. And I'm Brett, just moving when Derek pauses the description. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, yeah. sh- I'm what checking it, the, what do you do the now? Bushes and stuff too. Okay, sounds good. So, all right, well, go ahead and move your uh, tokens into uh, down that passageway if you want to. In fact, as you come around, uh, uh, Joran, uh, you see before you a stretching out in front of you a long, twisting passageway. The uh, ain't now you are well deep into the cave. You can feel the oppressiveness of the mountain weight upon you. And oh, whoa, it, does Bob feel it? Um, Bob, Bob, you would judge that you are probably now a good 30 or 40 feet underground. Um, the cave paintings here become a little bit more spaced out and spread out, seeming like different tribes, uh, because, again, different followings follow so many of the same routes. Yours is not the only one that follows this route um, or even passes necessarily next to this cave. And so it seems like different followings of different groups not just the burning mammoths this was a holy place to all of your people across the entire realm of the mammoth lords and each one is sort of uh i don't want to say claim to section but you know they they have put the great deeds of their people onto the you know their heroes again your the Kelid language doesn't really have a written form so a lot of this is just pictographic but there's great victories and great hunts and great heroes all of your people stretching back you know line after line all the way to the beginning they do call you, bid you take their place among you in the halls of Valhalla. This whole adventure is ruined for me now. It's Moana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I see House Falcons? Um, oh, yes. The houses of your people, you know, great and notable ancestors all carved in. And again, um, here, the, uh, the hallway kind of splits. And you see that there is a wide opening upwards to the north, opening into some sort of chamber or other hallways by the range of Joran's magical illumination. And to the south, a more tight, narrow passageway, which just edges onto the edge of one of those series of carved stone steps that the sound is downward. And you can hear and smell and feel uh, the presence of water or moisture to the south. Um, you can make that the sound of dripping on some sort of large underground surface of water. What way did the painting story lead? Uh, it's all over the place. I mean, it, this whole... So there's there's this, no, like, chronological order? I mean, you would say that, generally speaking, it goes this way, Bob, since okay, you're kind so of it's, the reading story the story. The story is continuing there, yeah. Yeah, but there's many... In fact, in many cases, in some cases, it looks like the story branches and, oh, and, and kind of goes north and to the south. But in, in the case of the burning mammoths, yes, it goes to the south, but... Do we feel particularly railroaded in a singular direction? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't mind seeing what's up to the top, but if, if the water is coming to the south, that might be interesting. Yeah. Moisture. We went big last time. Let's go tight this time. Okay. I like, I like it. All right. Jamari will carefully proceed down the steps, raising his spear so that everyone can see the edge of the water. All right, Jordan. So you make your way down to the edge of a vast lake. And as you do so, as you enter into a huge cavern, 
probably 100 or maybe even 200 feet long. You can hear your footsteps graveling, uh, your, uh, you know, your, your boots and your sandals graveling against the dirty floor, echoing in this vast chamber. It has been carved, but because the ceiling is so much higher here, m- the, most of it's still pretty natural. There are actually stalactites. Um, there's even some stalagmites. The walls here are more rough. This is a much more rough-hewn chamber. But what strikes out to you is a vast underground pond or lake. But in the center of that pond or lake, You can see, even from this distance, a glimmering and glowing shape. Something out on the lake is uh, kind of glowing or otherwise giving off illumination, um, like a beacon of light streaking across the cavern. Like a Uh, bluish? Like a what? Bluish? Like what color? Um. Yeah, it's kind of got a bluey look to it. It's it's it looks kind of magical, basically. I mean, there's definitely sort of a a pulsing. It's not a flame light. It's a cool blue light. And is it a spirit? Uh, make a religion check, there, Joran. Ooh, nice check, Joran. Uh, Nice check, Joran. Um, yeah. So you would say now that as you kind of get further down, um. I can't actually see it, but yeah. Uh, what's that? I can't actually see it if I'm supposed to see it. Uh, it's actually just off to the bottom of the screen. You should be able to scroll out and see it. Oh, you know what? I was probably yeah. I was on a corner. Um. Oh, a glowing runic circle. Wow, yeah. I guess it wasn't a ghost. <laughs> Joran, there you detect the presence here of vast amounts of energy of Sister Cinder's presence here. Is it subdued, captured? Like how's how's it interacting with the rage? It is it is independent from the rage. There is okay. a there is a definite source of energy. You can see on the island there is an old broken maybe it was a rock or stone that was particularly flat. And even from this distance, your old eyes can barely make out runic carvings upon the stonework. And the stone itself is giving off energy that seems to be pushing back against the spiritual weight here. Um, But it it, it seems like it's a glowing and welcoming energy, um, almost beckoning. We must reach that stone. Be cautious. We do not know what terrors wait in the pond. But it might be like Lord of the Rings, just like everything else has been. (laughs) Joran, shield rays, spear lowered down, carefully treads into the water, seeing how deep it is. Oh, she's okay. You're just going to go in there a little bit. Okay. Well, I mean, if it starts to get super deep, I'll stop. Um, <laughs> I'll hang within about 10 feet of Joran. I will stay on mainland. Um, so if you have your guys selected, you should be able to see um, that uh, uh, the, mm-hmm. the, the edges of the pond are difficult terrain, but the it does get deeper and it becomes basically... 20 foot steps, uh, which is basically you just bobbing along with your, you know, head maybe above water. But we're um, not swimming. You're not swimming, but you are moving. T- it's it's quadruple difficult. Sure. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but obviously swim checks could be more useful at that point. Sure. So. Uh, well, I, got my, I got my book open here. So you ask fail a swim check that you can stand up. What's that, Thron? I play this game? Aaron, you're, what you're, you're off your mic you- and everything. What happens if you fail a swim check, but you can stand up? Uh, nothing. Oh, okay. Like, I, I wouldn't start drowning, right? No, you only start drowning if you critically fail. Okay. But I could stand up? Yeah. Does armor <laughs> interact with swimming at all? Yeah, but not if you're strong enough, so no. Oh, so no. <laughs> <laughs> meaning armor can provide a penalty to athletics checks, but if you have the necessary strength, it does not. So then it does not. Um, all right. Is anything coming to eat me yet, Dirk? Uh, no, the waters of this underground pond seem uh, placid and calm, at least yeah. to your eyes. That means an untrained character should have no problem swimming through this, but luckily I'm a very trained character. All right. Whenever it gets inconvenient, Derek, I'll start swimming through this. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Um, so let me see here. Yeah. The, um, the, the deep water really starts like right about here. 
Okay. Um, so you guys can kind of. Oh, move. I can see it when I move my character. Yeah, when you move your character. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you should be able to see it when you move your character when you drag right. your your character. So when I get here, I will make an athletics check, I guess. All right. So yeah. Once I get attacked. Yeah, we'll 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 make have you make a little athletics check, but uh, Droga and Breck, uh, they begin swimming out and moving out in a nice check um, into the water. What are you two doing? Stay on dry land. Keep okay. an eye out. Breck. Yeah, I'm gonna start like circling around you know, the lake. Yeah, well, you can move a lot faster than them, so if you want to be somewhere else. But remember, it's going to get dark unless you have a torch. Oh, you do have I a torch. I am carrying a torch, yeah. You do have a torch. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I forgot about that. All right, Breck. Yep, so you, you're you circling oh. the torches. They got to move out. All right, uh, Thrawn and Joran, you guys make athletics checks. Okay, good. Oh, Apparently, I can nice. move 15 feet. All right, well. Or sorry, nope, that's probably just a success. <laughs> so 10 feet. <laughs> There you go. Which is better. Uh, than, I don't actually know what your DC is. So. Um, oh, right. That's true. Uh, the DC is 13. Um, oh, then critical success. I move uh, 15 feet. There you go. Which which would be the equivalent of 60 feet if you were moving at normal speed. So it's mm -hmm. all right. Nice. Um, so you guys are able to get out into the water. You guys can go ahead and put yourselves out there. Um, and you uh, begin swimming into the deep water proficiently, I might add. I got to take a torch out. Uh, Bob is left. In, <laughs> no, the light. Alone in the dark. Uh, Bob is left in the dark. <laughs> Are you guys like afraid of water, or what? What did I miss? Uh, Jane no, got just, paused before I could move up. Uh, uh, I just don't feel like getting. I know Thrawn's my boy for life. But what happened to you two? Seems like a poor decision <laughs> that you just walked into the lake. All right, and you guys uh, don't trust your cleric. I see how it is. Okay. All right, and oh, I trust you completely. I, I, I just want to see what's over there. <laughs> um, and then uh. As they move in into the deeper water, there might be some splashing, or there might not oh, be gosh. some splashing. <laughs> uh, splashing. Uh, as uh, <laughs> yeah, as uh, uh, three creatures roll initiative using stealth. I'm and, gonna roll using athletics, Dirk. <laughs> yeah, that works out. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> but I but I'll say though that that means plus, that you plus have one. But you that means um. Yeah, I was going to perceive them anyway. Come on. That's, that's what true. the armor class is for. It's All right. true. All right. So everybody roll your initiative, uh, but you don't know what it is yet unless you roll high enough initiative to beat their stealth checks. Does that make if sense? If you make but a perception check. But if you're rolling it less. Yeah, if you get a plus one because yeah. I was scouting. You get a plus one. All right. Well, Big Daddy Thrawn. Oh, we, yeah, we do get a plus one. Thank you. I was born in the water. <laughs> <laughs> the scouting helps me swim fast. Lot water birds are <laughs> real. All right. Well, the rest Ten of us again. don't know what we're doing. <laughs> All right, Thrawn, um, as you begin swimming out into the water, ah, you, damn it, I didn't make that night. You uh, suddenly see that uh, swimming in towards you from all three directions, including right next to you, you see three oh. shapes swimming under the water. Now, they are hidden, by the way, um, if you rolled initiative under their... Uh, if their initiative beats your passive perception. Okay. Okay. So in other words, look at your initiative. Okay. Uh, or look at their initiative, I should say. If that's higher than your passive perception, you cannot see them. So for example. I can't see their initiative. We can't see their initiatives. Oh, why not? Because we can't see them. Because we're not in. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, we can't see them. <laughs> All right. How about now? <laughs> how about yes. now? Okay, great. Hey. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> Okay. So, so obviously, oh, two, so I only so, don't see the first one. Yeah. Yep. So obviously two rolled horribly, by the way, for people at home. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll put, I'll put the initiative up for people at home. Uh, two, two of the, uh, two of the Lacedons got eights. Um, so they were hiding, but as they move in, you guys suddenly, you know, react because uh oh, i killed that oh. one <laughs> yeah, they gave up <laughs> Oops. that's how quickly and we that's reacted so good. uh but no <laughs> but nobody but thron sees this lacedon as the three water ghouls begin swimming in underneath the current floating towards you think ghouls but with webbed hands and you know icky icky uh, uh stuff dripping off of them and gross um you know i don't even know what they're called seaweed and other gross stuff part of this problem is well. i don't understand how foundry works here we go <laughs> i feel like everyone says that on their turn oh yeah so these are like bloated women <laughs> yes who are oh, not this one kind of really like attractive but might be after 
All right. Okay. So, <laughs> um, three Lacedons begin swimming through you. And once again, those of you spiritually attuned, which at this point is everybody but Droga, feels a sudden pulse or wave of, of spiritual rage kind of pulse through the chamber. Uh, Jorah and you, who are particularly attuned to it and did very well in your uh, thing, you notice that the spiritual pulse of energy seems to almost strike towards the island and then wrap around it. Like it doesn't actually penetrate into that area. Um, and um, as if the power of Saren yeah. Ray, which you detected a uh, sister cinder, I should say, is somehow it might be a safe zone. It's just shielding it for somehow. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Lacedons begin to move, but uh, Thrawn, the mighty goes first. All right, Thrawn, this is going to be our last fight for the night, fellas. So uh, yeah. now remember uh, if you're moving, you're going to move really slow unless you take one action to swim. But these are uh, obviously aggressive. Oh, yeah. Is it like fly where if you don't take a move, you just start drowning? <laughs> no, but you cannot step in the water. Just remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, well, I will immediately go into a rage because I've seen these type of undead things before. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> this is oh, my whole screen. Yeah, right. How about that? Um and yeah, I'm not messing around this time. Okay. Uh, and we will sudden charge uh, this nearest Lacedon. All right. Well, um, uh, sudden charge allows you to move how many? Well, yeah, he's only have to move. He's five feet. He has to yeah. move 20 feet right. because of the. He's like, Rawr! He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like in a swimming pool where you're like, you do the, the double hop and then you dunk. Yes. <laughs> I'll move. I'll move all the way there because I can do a double move. Yep, that sounds so good. I'll move to there. All right. There. Yep. And uh, you know, just it's just I'm like swing like this. This is gonna be a little awkward, so I won't be surprised if I quite miss. All right. Now, a couple things here. Be oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you miss, but also. Um, you're going to have a minus two penalty to slashing or bludgeoning attacks if they go through the water. And since these you since you guys are basically up to your tippy toes, you will have okay. a minus two penalty, circumstance penalty, if your attacks are slashing or bludgeoning. <laughs> okay? Um, All, also, ranged attacks that deal bludgeoning or slashing damage automatically miss um, if their target is underwater. But piercing range attacks uh, are fine. Are fine. Um, I and, am... Go ahead, sorry. And I was also going to say, if you don't have a swim speed, you're flat-footed. So you guys are both flat-footed. Yikes. Get out of the water. I know, right? All right, Thron. Um, so you dun, 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 sudden dun, dun, charged dun. and you raged, so you're done. Well, I am going to use my action point to reroll that. Oh, uh, okay. All right, great. You're gonna <clears> my hero points. You're, you're not real. My, not my rage. Point. Gotcha. My hero point. Got it. Okay, sorry. I skipped your turn ahead too much early, but <laughs> all right. You uh, call upon a great anger within you. Oh, no, this is just your... You call upon I, your innate hero. This is just... I, I, know what's, I know what's required of, of getting these guys in, so... All right. I, I, I make the attack this time. All right. All right. Well, 18. remember, th that's add 10 to this. So 25 minus two for the uh, water penalty. Uh, yes, exactly. Minus two. So 25. That is a hit. All right. Is it a crit? No, that's what I was checking. All right. All right. <laughs> you crush into the creature, uh, which uh, which looks somewhat injured, but not uh, not too terribly. All right, this creature mm. who is hidden uh, to uh, oh no, I'm double flat footed. You are double flat footed, but more importantly, it allows it to use its aquatic ambush. Oh, oh boy! All right. Um, now its swim speed is thirty, so it has no problem about that. And so now you are double it's ambush. plus 10 to its swim speed for this move yes uh but it, it gets to move and strike as one action so and um, I'm, I'm triple gosh. flat footed <laughs> because i'm flat footed yeah it's hidden and this makes me flat footed <laughs> that's right <laughs> all right well luckily that doesn't stack so you're just triple flat footed all right uh smith all three of your feet are flat this yep. thing comes up from behind Ooh. you and bites you <laughs> Uh, it is uh, my shield up, so. 22 hit. Somehow. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Max damage again. What wow. is happening? Derek, Derek broke foundry. That's what happened. 11 damage. Right. Uh, well, the shield's taking most of that, so that's the good news. What is the hardest on your sturdy shield? Remind us. Nine. Nice. All right, so you and the shield take two damage. Yeah. So nice. not too much. All right, but here comes a map attack from the claw. 
I can do nothing. My defenses are down. All right. And I expose my throat. All right. <laughs> you take Dang. nine damage. All right. Just, just rolling max gracious. every roll. <laughs> What is going on? Come on. <laughs> Triple map attack? Wait a minute. Oh, you're, you're kidding me. Is that right? What just yeah. happened here? No, yeah, you know, you just tripled max yeah. damage. All right, all right, all right. It's only six. Okay. Um, well, the oh Lassadon, the Lassadon springs from the water and claws, claws, claws. And oh, then, uh, Joran, you are almost pulled under the waves by the powerful, uh, insane I'm creature. I'm sad you didn't finish the job. Very disappointed. <laughs> I hope that rune's got some healing powers. You might want to go check it out. We are, no, we're out. Everything's out. This rune is going to be a skill challenge and something else. That's, that's it. Uh, Joran, it is your turn. All right. Going to make an athletics check once I find the button. Here we go. You can drag stuff. You can drag skill checks to your hot bar, right? Yeah, they just break when I do that. Okay. Uh, so, not crit. So yep. I'm going to move five, ten feet because I succeeded. Yep. And you're going to use a second move just to get up here now. Yeah, that, that's not difficult terrain to move on to that. So you're good there. All right. So I get up here. Yep. And, uh, Okay, I got one action left. I'm gonna chuck my spear because I have three of them. This is what they're for. Okay. Who are you throwing it at? Uh, the one on uh, Thrawn. Yep, that sounds good. Hoot! Hoot! Technically, the light goes with it, but um, this is true. <laughs> so we'll, we'll put you, just put the torch on it, and I'll turn mine off. Okay, done. <laughs> oh, hang on. I'm gonna remove my magic. Thingy. I don't know why it still thinks it's magical. Oh, you know why? Because I I put in something there for you. There you go. Okay, thank you. Yep. Right. Hua! No, I didn't. Hey! hey! It's, a, it's a it's a hit. Just a hit. Twenty six. Oh, hit. No, well, no, he, he, he was targeting Breck, so it's. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Breck, you're hit. Oh, God, <laughs> uh, what'd what you get, Aaron? Uh, Twenty six. Okay, that is a, just just a hit. It's a hit against the Lacedon. All right. This is Pearson. I don't know if it matters. You just go. Uh, yeah, he take he. Well, you don't get a you don't get a penalty to your attack, and you don't get take any right. uh, thing off. All right, so I will turn off my torch. Yes, and you turn the torch on for him. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Okay. Uh, but there's also, like I said, the glowing runic circle here, which does give you some uh, piece of elimination. All right, Droga. Three uh, Lacedons have emerged in the water and are beginning swimming towards Thrawn. Oh, first section. I'm gonna drop my torch for free. Yep. Hunt prey. The Lacedon that uh, just did. Actually, I'll take the one that uh, in front of uh, Thron. Yep, it's gonna get uh, lesser cover. Oh really? Yep. Oh, it's, it's underwater. Uh, no, it's just Thron's in the way. No way. Can you draw a straight line from your corner to all four corners of that creature's square without intersecting a? Not all four. Then it has cover. Is that, uh, is that still we, a Pathfinder thing, Derek, or is it, that a third edition? Thing? Nope, that's the thing, except now it doesn't go from a corner of your square. It goes from the oh, middle okay. of your square. Okay, okay. And it goes to the middle of your middle. We are still going to target him. All right. And we're going to go for my hunted shot. All right, it doesn't have cover. I just did the check. I drew it out. <laughs> no. All right. All right, Droga, you take aim and make the shot. It's a hit. Hey. It's a hit. Yeah, this is excellent. All right. I All changed right. my noise from pew pew to hit hit. Yeah, two and three damage. <laughs> well done, buddy. You, you, oh, he, he's taking it all. This is so <laughs> impressive. Archery. Archery is good so job. good. In when you don't roll yep. max damage on every die you attack with. All right. And then, come in, and then what's the what's the swim? You move at half speed? No. In I mean, the water? I mean, it, it's got its difficult terrain, so your character will automatically slow down. Perfect. I command Barrack to start to... Move into the water. He goes, what? <laughs> the you got him, buddy. <laughs> Bears like water. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a polar bear. He does, swims. Does he have a swim speed? <laughs> no, he doesn't. What a failure, Paizo. Where's this at? <laughs> That's bullshit. That, <laughs> um, but that is my turn, though. Okay. Breck. All right, Breck. All right, Breck. You've All moved right. to the far side. Um, you can see that there's Lacedons surrounding your party, but... Uh, you, you... Yeah, so I, I start with a stride there. Yep. And then, uh, uh, Derek, can I? Can, uh, I, I want to do some wild bullshit. I want to do a running long jump, sudden charge <laughs> at the the one in the water. I, I respect that. I don't know. Yeah. How, uh, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's, 
<laughs> carry the two. Right. Carry, carry the hatchet in one hand and the torch in the other. The hatchet. The with, the hatchet, hatchet gonna, with the hatchet and the torch. <gasps> they just like jump both hands in the air and smash down on him. All right. Air. So, Breck, you're going to you're gonna move and then the long, you, you stride once and then um you're going to sudden charge. So you're going to turn that two action sudden charge, but you're going to interject into there a, uh, a, a long jump. I respect right. it. All right, Breck, uh, give me an athletics check. You got it. You're gonna need you're gonna need twenty, sir, to be able to pull this off. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> Nineteen. <laughs> We're gonna hero point. I don't even care. All right, of course. Brett goes to the end, and then yeah. Uh, so there. now we got a twenty-three this time. Uh, Brett, <laughs> you go sailing <laughs> through the air. <laughs> so as he comes down. Yep. Here comes the hatchet. <laughs> You know you wanted hatchet. Why didn't it target there? T. There we there go. There you go. T for target. All right. Yep. Um, the last of Don. You know what? I'm going to make him flat footed to that. He wasn't expecting that. That's against, <laughs> that's against the law. That's against the rules of the game. So that's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tim, you hit. Nice. So we can do the damage. There we eight go. Eight damage. All right. He takes eight damage. Um, and then I'm floating in the water. <laughs> correct. All right. Uh, who is next? Oh, the I'm last. I'm going to turn my torch out. All right, the Lacedon that seems that's probably fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Lacedon is going to target. Uh, it's going to target Thron here, and it's going to uh, the the ghoul is going to start slashing and jawing at you, uh, biting into you in a, in a frenzy. Oh, but he misses you. Oh. You hold him back and push him. He misses by three. Oh no! Nice. He, he attacks again, clawing and raking at you. He can't do nothing. He had to roll a two to miss by three. Just I so I know. understand that. That's what's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then hey, and then. Uh, God, sorry. Wow, all three attacks miss. Whew. Hey, Thrawn, if uh, uh, swinging is a problem because it's bludgeoning, there is a spear sticking out of them. <laughs> oh, that's true. And you are uh, you are in the uh, 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 thing. Now, uh, Breck, uh, you're going to be flat-footed because you're in the water. Yep. Uh, and it's, like, dark over here. Uh, yeah. And so it's 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 scary and it's bad. Um, so this, this is what, yeah, this is what Breck sees. It's not good. Um, all right. I mean, there's a little bit of illumination, but you're in the water, so it's definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right, Breck. First, here come the jaws. They, the, the ghoul tries to rip you under the water. Oh, man, I think wow. it's uh, a ghoul. Rolling five go. Oh, no, fight, ghouls. Too. Yeah, Get I, said, I said it's a lacedon. It's a water ghoul. That's true, yeah. yeah. Uh, it just no one's been hit. I mean, you're rolling really bad right now. I, I, I got paralyzed in the rended the crap. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, 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 right. The goal here is paralyzed in the water. You're yes. mobilized and then you drown. That's what I'm trying to go for with this uh, encounter. Oh. Or by the, was by I supposed way, to make a fort save or something? Uh, do you got hit by the jaws or the bite, not the claws? Hey, I thought I got hit by everything because you just rendered the hell out of me. Oh, I did. Yeah. Uh, Smith, yeah. Make, make a fort save. <laughs> Oh, we're past that. We're, uh, you're on the island now. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, that's uh, he forgot to he forgot to wear his paralyzation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, the power of Saren Ray was with you. Uh, you got lucky. There. All right, he had like just paralyzed something. Right. He couldn't uh, do it twice in well, a row. Well, they you know? all <laughs> miss, and that brings up Thrawn's turn. Excellent. And if you're dun, thinking dun, this, dun, is... dun, dun, dun. sorry, no, <laughs> Thrawn. All right, so you're bobbing around in the water, mm -hmm. uh, still flat footed. Uh, still minus two to attack. All right, there is a Lassadon in front of you, but it has a spear sticking into it and several arrows sticking into it, and you punched it in the face. Uh, so it is fairly, it is pretty barely, or, or no, it's it's badly injured, not badly barely. Badly injured. Yeah. Badly nice. injured. So what do you want to do, I buddy? hit it with an arrow. Now there's nothing that, oh, oh, here we go. There's nothing that says I can't sudden charge to here what? and still attack it. Uh, As, if, as long as you have the movement, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving closer to land. Yep, that's fine. As I do so. Yep, it does not. It does not and have I'm, attack of opportunity. So you. I'm still bringing bringing the fist around. Yep, you sudden charge to its other side through the other water. Side. That's a little swim move through the five and a half foot deep water. All right, it's like got water it. Water polo. <laughs> um. Oh, you miss. Sorry, buddy. That rage, though. That rage. Uh, all right, but I'm, that rage. I'm out of my element right now. You're raging. These last dons. That, oh, no. <laughs> it's got to be real frustrating awkward. that you're he's out of splashing your around. All right. You know what? You're right. Really, it's just you splashing this in the water. It's not, weird. Just, it's, not a, what's going on. it's not a time to be. Hit me. Pathfinder's trying to do something that isn't a hallway fight, you know? So it's just it's just awkward. <laughs> all right, Thron. Thron, you have one more action. No. Oh, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought you were going to move on to the, the, the yeah, island. I'll, I'll, take, I'll make an athletics check to to swim to shore. Yep. Go for it. You need a 13 to get there. 
Well, I think you're probably good well, for I that. Had to because reset my. Sorry about this. It's okay. You know, it's only. I, I wish to, I had to reset my. Screen. I wish there was a combat utility toolbar where you could just right click on your uh, or left click on your person and get all your uh, actions and skills. We at spent once. over time trying to find it though because I think it's so disorganized. <laughs> I disagree. Yeah. I find it very. I, I, I find it. Tool. I find it very. Uh, 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 I'll put a poll in the chat here. Hold a sec, uh, Ron. <laughs> you get up on the, the, to land. You can go ahead and move yourself, even if it uh, the move the movement will look horrible, <laughs> but it's fine because grapple and drown them. Uh, grapple and drown them. <laughs> grapple and drown them. I love it. Um, let, me, let me put <laughs> that a poll been up. Pretty sweet. <laughs> and I do like you come and get me here, Tim. Do you Water. remember playing World of Warcraft in Undead Rogues? stun locking you underneath the water particularly what was it in uh uh that the, the eastern zone off of uh, uh metathil harbor no it was off of um uh elwyn forest there's that lake there <coughs> it's where all the knolls are oh uh, uh red ridge mountains yeah yeah, yeah yeah i got ganked there so many times by uh by undead because I'd be doing a quest in the lake and then two of them would appear and just... Yeah, yeah, Wrath Classic just came out and there are a lot of quests that are exclusively underwater. It's yeah. quite tilting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Breck. This Lassadon yes, is going to move... Oh, it wants to kill a bear? Oh, no. No. Oh. It's going to double Tim. It's gonna double move to here, Tim, to flank oh. you. All right. Do you gotta take I'm going to attack it is as it, it moves yeah. past me. Yep. It's swimming. Uh, but, Tim, you get to make... Um, you get to make an attack of opportunity. But uh -huh. minus two Action to your, of opportunity. Minus two to attack, though, because it's not a piercing weapon. Minus two. And the creature's kind of, you know, doing dolphin maneuver under the water. <laughs> this evil ghoul swimming through the water. It's got webbed feet. and But you still... 20. Which minus, <laughs> minus two... That is what the minus two builds. Hit with zero. Damn it. So you hit. <laughs> oh, you hit no matter what. Yeah. No, he, no, he hit. All right, Tim. Okay. Hit this bad boy. Oh. 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 Yeah. I oh. get all max damage too, bitch. <laughs> that bone hatchet. It, so it's good. because the hatchet is evil, so therefore it's an NPC, so therefore it gets Derek's buff. That. <laughs> that there you go. All Thank right. you, Derek. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, the creature swims up and then it bites you with its jaws. You are flanked and you're flat-footed. It doesn't really uh -oh. make a difference. It, yeah, it's it's a hit. it's almost a critical hit. Tim, you take oh not max damage, but ten as the Lacedons begin flanking the fighter in the water, trying to pull him down. It's the only thing that could possibly bring a fighter down, <laughs> is him being flanked in the water by water ghouls, but you know, right. they're trying. Uh but he's still got a lot of hit They'll points. They'll do their best. All right. Well, who we got next? We got Joran of Mendev. All right. Well, Jordan's a hot mess. Uh, <laughs> Can I get one of those light spears over here, too? <laughs> uh, that's just a good question. What's the range of light? Light. Oh, touch. <laughs> I would literally have to cast it and throw. Are you in the dark? Are you Are you really in the uh, dark? My torch is out. Yeah, it's bad. But, okay. but the rune is glowing. Yeah, yeah, but he's at the edge of it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, my vision, I am, my token is half dark, half light, half barely light. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Tim, the people at home, the, the people at home get to see a, a more uh, illuminated map because, you know, I want them to be able to see yeah. everybody, so. Got it. Well, it's so, funny, I can see group vision if I don't have my self-selected. Correct, view. correct, because yeah, yeah. I have that on still. I cool. draw my spear. I cast light. I am done. <laughs> Three action. <laughs> so good. It's so good. This oh, is like the so good the system. It's just so amazing right now. Droga. All right. All right, buddy. Okay. So I, I want to command Barrick. He has to, he has to make an right. he has to make uh, athletics check. Yeah. Okay. Does he, he's got athletics, right? Yep. 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 I just got, I just have to do it. <laughs> All right. Bear's got legit athletics. Yeah. Where, where is the bear swimming to? Uh, almost crit. Uh, so he's, how, he's so going to he move. He can move half his speed. Is that how it goes? Uh, no, I believe it's 10 feet. If it's a success, which that is, because it. it's off by one, it is five feet plus your speed. What's your speed? Is it 25? 35. 35. Okay, no, actually, it's not. Yeah. Let okay. me consult the book. Um, Very important if I can make it a little farther. <laughs> plus five feet per 20 feet of your land speed. Oh, okay, got it. So only five more feet. Yeah, but that's more than like a human. No, but I only can move 10 feet then. Total. Oh. Because I, I don't get that bonus until I get to 40. Yeah, feet. you're right. You got to get 40. Yeah, yeah 40. Right. All right. Well, then he just moves up a little bit. He can't do anything much. Got it. Uh, he, I guess he can move twice. Uh, he could try to. You did. You did. Well, each one's a flex check because swim is an action. 
That's right. Each one has to be a check. So you have to make another check. Because we have to see if your bear starts drowning in the water. <laughs> right. There's a chance to be a critical failure. All right. He makes another athletics check yep. to keep moving. Yep. To double move here. He did. He does not. He did not. So, he, but he doesn't start drowning. He just he's treading water. He can't make any progress. Yeah, you just got a failure, so nothing happens. Right. So okay. You, <laughs> right. You move zero. Okay. Great. All right. All right. But then my hunted prey is there, so I'm going to take my hunted shot at him. Yep. Okay. Two attacks then from your hunted yep. shot. Uh, yep. The first one misses by a mile. Oh gosh, that one goes into the water, almost hits my. Bear. Oh, that one hits. That oh, one hits, oh we're coming in for maximum right. damage. Actually, this is important, Derek. We haven't been doing this because not everyone's been making uh, swim actions. At the end of your turn in water, if you haven't succeeded at a swim action at turn, you sink 10 feet or get right. moved by the current. So it's just like fly. It is. But <laughs> you guys, the, the thing is, you guys can stand on the bottom. You can stand. Uh, okay. So you okay. are. You we are. Can't, you, we would be sinking, you, but we got it. Yeah, yeah. If you were halflings or something, you would be sinking. Uh, but, Bob, you just hit with your longbow for eight damage on this guy. And he has had one hit point. Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> so I, got one more, I got one more action. Okay. Hail Mary. This one sails into the air, comes down. It's a hit! And it hits him, yes! <laughs> All right, well, we know he's got one. <laughs> that's yeah! A, yeah, that's exactly what he needed. All right, with the one hit point left, the last of Don is porcupine. It's got four arrows and a spear stuck light. in it. Oh, now the <laughs> spear's going under the water. <laughs> I, deleted, I deleted it. <laughs> that was my light. I'm so in the dark now. Hang on, Bob, hang on. Bob is totally... Like, Oh, oh yeah, you got you got to get a new light on you there, Smith. I did I did cast light, so we're good. Oh, nice. Well, no, stay but, on, stay on. But no, I'm I'm super far away from no, you. No, but guys. Droga is really far away from you guys, so he can't. I was, only, I was only hitting him because he was glowing. Yeah. Droga's not even on my map anymore. Well, I'm going to try to throw this at, at Tim here at some point. Now, to be fair, Bob, yeah. even if you're in darkness, if he throws the spear near Tim and Tim can catch it, then you could see that light. So then you can yeah. shoot from distance that's across the, the thing. Well, that's a good point. Are we going to try to catch the spear, or am I targeting a bad guy? Oh, that's a good point breck it is your turn though buddy i don't oh, know oh snap all right well the first thing breck's gonna do is he is actually going to make a uh intimidate check using demoralize with a he's got the intimidating glare feet so he just screams a bestial roar at the uh, lacedon uh, in front of him closest to the island tim i'm gonna give you a plus two circumstance bonus to this check because you feel extra empowered through your anger and rage and and you know just yelling and screaming and terrifying people the right. spiritual right. energy of the right. cavern reflects oh, that sort of negative energy nice. emotions. All right, so here is my... Do I have them targeted? Yes. Smart Damn it. All right. A 21. All right, Tim, not a uh, critical or anything like that, but he does become frightened. There yeah, we excellent. go. So I scare the piss out of him, and then oh, I... I made him fleeing, but there we go. Bring the hatchet down bring with hatchet. furious purpose. Uh, so uh, are you uh, dual striking then, Kaz? Or uh, Tim? Uh, no, because I only have one weapon, right? Well, actually, I can draw the battle axe now because I'm not holding the torch anymore. Right. So, but then I only have one action to attack left. But right, fair <laughs> enough. So I will attack the hatchet yeah, once. If you just attack, I can chuck the spear to you, and then you can grab it with your free hand. Yeah, yes, if you leave perfect. your hand free, then you're, you're good. Yep. All right, so you're gonna attack twice with the hatchet. Oh, oh my! <laughs> Hatchet lives. Um, unreal. <laughs> Unbelievable. Twelve damage, just cleaving through people. The Lacedon is cleaved in half. The the bone hatchet seems to to relish the violence, empowered with the souls of the death and the dead. Um, the uh, the hatchet drinks it all in. Tim, you still have one action left. Oh, the I sense the hatchet. <laughs> I hear the free. Me. <laughs> and I bring in the hatchet map attack. Oh man. Uh, the hatchet go. map attack. Uh, okay. Aww. All right, that's fair. That's fair. You All know? right. Uh, and Breck <laughs> and Breck is out of hero points, so that's uh he's yes, out of okay. It punishes you for your indolence. The end of my, it does, yeah. All right. Well, Tim, you're flanked. The Lacedon is going to just rip into yes, you here. Sir. Um it's going the to hatchet would not let me do anything else with my last action. Ooh, good hit. <laughs> that's ooh, not a crit though. Not ooh. because of frightened. Just hanging in. <laughs> yeah. It, it got a minus one uh, because it is frightened. So it just missed because of frightened. Math is tight. You Oh, one, six points of damage. All right. Uh, I can survive six. And then the creature comes in with a claw attack, which definitely misses. And then the creature Ooh. comes in with its map. But, oh, it's still a hit. Ooh. Oh, I did hit, yeah. Tim, you take five, six more points of damage. Tim, make a fortitude save. All right. Uh, now, luckily, the, the DC no. is lower. 
uh, because it's frightened. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, oh. Man. So it's probably a fail. Tim, you yeah, are buddy. paralyzed. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and so it begins. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, that third map attack coming in hot. <laughs> now, good news is, Tim, technically you won't start to drown until the end of your next turn. Next turn. Excellent. Uh, th thank you, Smith, for looking those up for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, we're still a learning channel. Uh, right, that's true. Like that's true. Like that's that's very, very teach. Okay, so the Lassadons finally paralyzed somebody. Uh, and Tim, um, they basically, you know, You'll drown on your own because you yeah. obviously can't stand up. I can't up. breathe because you, I'm paralyzed. Correct, exactly. <laughs> um, so Thrawn, you suddenly see Breck go par you know, go still. His, his muscles freeze up <laughs> as the flanking Lacedons finally get him. And then they start to, you know, this is all thematically, but they start to basically right. bring him under the water. So Thrawn. So I want to like, there's this rock right here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to like do a running... I knew Leap. that. I knew that's what he wanted to do. Remember right we started talking about it. Yeah, let me this guess. Let right me guess. Here. You want to do a sudden charge long <laughs> jump from the yeah. top ropes? From the yeah, top buddy. ropes. But you know what? It's from it's from the top rope. So how can that's we? Right. How can we not do that? All right. Breck goes. I climb the ropes. Breck. Breck. Look, look, as Breck's, look, look, look. No, Breck's going down. He goes. Oh, he like tags him in. <laughs> <laughs> At home, everybody's crazy, going crazy. Oh, he didn't get tagged in. He didn't get tagged in. It's illegal. <laughs> Thrawn comes out. Oh, off God, the ceiling. my witness. He <laughs> now shouldn't be alive. <laughs> Thrawn runs to the edge of the island, gets to the uh, gets to the massive stone, leaps into the air. Thrawn, give me an athletics check. You still need to cover the All distance, right. buddy. <laughs> creates, creates the Congo line. Uh, here well, we go. Tim doesn't flank anymore. Uh, um, oh, oh, that's right. All right, Kaz, you get enough height that you go up like you're above the guy coming down. So you're like, <laughs> like supermaning down onto him with this massive punch. You go full, and elbows. you go full Star Trek style, Kaz. Double fist. It's just going to be a hammer fist down on top of this guy. Kaz, right. Kaz, I will make him flat footed for this. He did not see this coming. <laughs> All right, Kaz, make your attack roll. They'll never expect the same attack twice. They won't. They will Here not. Here we go. All right. 19 is a hit. Nice. Roll your damage, I buddy. Like it. He I is like it. he is badly injured. This could finish him. Ooh, not uh, enough. Oh, oh man. He is left with just a handful of hit points. But Kaz, you splash in the water. You still have one action left. So you can uh, follow up with I'm a bring that second strike around. Yeah, yeah, you can follow up with a map attack. So yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Map attack. <laughs> Okay, no, oh, no. Uh, yes. And he is no longer flat-footed. <laughs> All right. Well, Kaz, you almost bring the creature low. Uh, the Lassadon that is... Uh, uh, Tim, you're paralyzed, so this yep. guy's going to ignore... Do I want to rage? This guy is going to swim to here. You'll note he does not go onto the island. Mm. Um, he Noted. He double moves to here, and then he makes one strike at Kaz with his jaws, and that's going to be a hit. Kaz... Mm. Ooh, I rolled minimum damage again. So six damage. Seems Finally pretty, balancing out. It, these, things, <laughs> these things have a pretty high attack. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it for me. So that brings up Joran. All right. Joran sees his boy go underwater. No, he yells. And he's going to leap into the water. And unlike these hacks, Derek, I actually have the feet that lets me do this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's gonna quick jump. Uh, no, no, no. Quick jump just lets you jump as one action. Well, right, yeah. So I'm gonna take one action to hop right. without a running start. So right, that's what I'm saying. That's what it lets me do. They were spending two actions. Yeah, I'm gonna spend one. I, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, buddy. What? Are you are you gonna make a giant Congo line? <laughs> Ooh, yes, nice jump. The ultimate Congo. Uh, nice. uh, so you can go. Five, you can go uh, four. 15, Twenty. It's a little wonky because it says the crow flies, but uh, Jordan, yeah, yeah, you basically can go there. Yep, that's. I'm crazy. basically a crow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's old, ridiculous. I was just seeing this old man with <laughs> no running leap just goes like <laughs> from a dead standstill watches 20 feet forward. <laughs> All right. I, I think that actually happened in The Hobbit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it probably did, actually. You know, I was, about, I was about to say, whatever reality, and I was like, okay, yeah, the fact that you just yeah. defended that with The Hobbit means that this maneuver is completely nonsense. All right, Joran. <laughs> uh, All right. Joran, uh, 
<laughs> crashes into the water and lets the weight of gravity pull him under to go and scoop up Tim. Yep. Uh, I don't know how many actions it takes to put yeah. Tim under my arm. Yeah, it is one. All right. Uh, and if I got an action left, I'm going to start swimming him to shore. Uh, yeah, you can make a swim check. Athletics. Uh, eh, your your Pathfinder character doesn't matter. Oh, you got enough, Aaron. So you get uh, you get what? Uh, uh, ten oh, feet. I just succeed ten feet. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. you you don't quite get him to shore, but you can drag him to like. Oh, you're going the other way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I'm right. actually this is shallower here, so yeah. I'm gonna, like throw him in front of me. Yeah. 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 I was there gonna you say. Go. You, yeah, yeah. You can just kind of like har, har, you got you kind of like you basically go in there. You you go full Hasselhoff. Joran strips off his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he just got, he just got, oh shit! He just got got full hassle off. Don't all hassle the half. All of a sudden, there's this music playing in the background. It's like there's a fire burning sometimes deep in your soul. Jordan, like it cuts to like a zoom, a crash zoom of Jordan going blowing a whistle, and he's like leaping, and they look over. The spear's been replaced by that weird red floaty thing and he's just like <laughs> yeah i was thinking night rider i don't know <laughs> well that's like he old jumped, that's og he, hop he <laughs> jumped right wait, wait, wait. <laughs> i said david hasselhoff joran oh, just man. leapt from an island to lifeguard somebody and you thought night rider i don't know it's, it came to my head <laughs> What is wrong with you? You could have been forgiven, like, oh, you could have said Spongebob, and that would have been okay. Yeah, at least that's oh. in the fucking water. <laughs> well, when, when did you say Hasselhoff? I think Night Rider. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I was like, is, yeah. is Kit going to bust through the wall? Like, <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen? That song is playing in my head. All right, all right. Hello, Breck. I'm here to save you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hatchet is Kit. No. <laughs> Oh, love it, love it. Un Actually, it's it's got the line. <laughs> Breck, we should kill them all. <laughs> yeah. right. But it, I, there had to have been an episode with like evil Kit, right? Like there had oh, to be. Yeah, hundred yeah, 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 yeah. percent. Uh, all the time. By the way, I'm sorry for anybody. You've driven me for the last. Time. For any of our, everyone's like, wait, isn't this show like 40 years old? Yeah. yeah for, any, for any of our viewers who are under the age of 25, that was a TV show in the 80s. Look at uh, <laughs> so it was called Hatchet. It was called Hatchet 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 <laughs> and it was it was K A oh, evil oh, version of Kit. Oh, so nice. good. Uh, uh, Rick, by the way, Rick Sherman confirms there totally was an evil Kit. Yes, car. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's what I was saying. Yeah. Hero point to Jorah Bike. Uh, hero, hero, Jorah, Jorah Bike. Jorah Bike gain a hero point. Um, nice. Okay, Droga. A bunch of shit happens. Uh, <laughs> but you're good. Uh, so what's going on, buddy? Well, uh, I'm gonna, oh uh, yeah, fuck, you're in this fight, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Barrett. Oh yeah, gonna, way over there. I'm gonna Let's command. You, buddy. Yeah, well, I'm gonna command Barrett to uh, try to try to keep swimming. Just keep just swimming. Keep swimming. So how's that work? You can't see anything. Are you just like? No, no. He can just see. keep swimming. Just uh, keep swimming. He, right. doesn't, he doesn't, fails. So doesn't swim well. So he's drowning. You get to make another athletic check. Super exciting. Oh, this poor just, bear. Still okay. can't make any progress. He's he's cut on seaweed. Um, well, no, the, the, the glowing circle provides illumination. So he has yeah. some, the, 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 he can see Barrick because of the light. Yes. No, no. He can see the Lacedons now because they're close enough right. to the Island. All right. I start moving. I don't move into the water. That's my turn. Okay. Um, Breck. Breck. Uh, you're paralyzed. Oh, 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 I just, I, I use all of my actions to try and make a thumbs up for Joran. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, bud. All right, Joran, uh, Breck at the end of your turn, make a fort save. Yes, sir. Uh, DC goes down by one, but it's fine. 19 again. Uh, but the DC is lower, so you are successful. All right. Because uh, it goes, the DC drops by one each turn. All right, Breck, at the end of your turn, uh, you are no longer paralyzed. Hooray. Uh, I don't know how to undo this. Paralyzed is a gem I for some other reason. I got rid of it. All right. Somehow. And because of uh, Joran supporting you, you're not prone either. You're just kind of like. Sweet floating in the thing and you're, all your equipment is not scattered yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> uh lacedon oh that's me oh you're flanked oh he targets you oh god <laughs> he attacks you got you. this right buddy you got this oh. i miss oh. 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 he I wrote miss. a five and missed by one <laughs> look uh, uh, look at this target I know. his attack is so strong <laughs> target has ape animal instinct rage minus one flat-footed minus two and i still miss by one wow, wow. amazing there we go. That's 21. Yeah, here, here come the claws. 
Uh, oh, all right. Well, only one hit. That's good. Uh, Kaz, take seven damage and make a fortitude save as the ghoul paralyzation courses through you. Is it the claws or the bite? It's the claws. Rip my teeth. Okay. Nice. All right. Uh, you are totally fine, uh, Thrawn, and are unharmed by the ghoul's paralyzation. All right. That brings us back to Thrawn. All right, Thrawn, there's two Ooh. Lacedons left. One in front of you is injured, and the one behind you is near death. You're raging, and uh, your allies are mostly in safe. So what do you want to do, buddy? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to turn and take a... I'm getting, I'm getting my, my actions going on here. I'm going to take a swing at this guy, uh, the near death one right, right there. Get him. Yep. Get him. <clears throat> All right, you turn around and bash him. There we go. Here we go. Bam. Nice. Come All on. Right. Spear oh. hand strike action. Hold on a sec. 21 minus 2. It's still a hit, though. 19. It's 19. still a hit. Okay, you're good. Okay. All right. Do your full damage. <sighs> Seven. Well, the good news is he was near death. You targeted the right one. He's dead. Oh, yeah. And oh. you're no longer Ooh, nice. flexed. Oh, my God. Oh, but you are still fl flat-footed because you're in the water. All right. So right. now I'm going like to swim accident matter. <laughs> to the shore. Uh, make my athletics check. Yep. Oh, oh, 30. Oh, nice. You can yeah. move. He's swimming. You can swim Actually, as far as yeah. backflip out of the uh, water. Yeah, 15 feet. <laughs> yeah, he does like a seal. He just starts dolphin kicking and just kicks out of the water. <laughs> ar, ar, ar. <laughs> he is that animal instinct yeah. barbarian. Yeah, it's true. It checks out. The seal instinct kicks in. Walrus uh, seal. So I'll, just... <laughs> uh, I'll slide to there. Yep. And then, uh, actually, I'll slide to here because now I'm on land, right? Yep, and so you're no, I, and you're no longer flat footed. Yep. So you get so no I target him. Can I? No what? No, please. You have no penalty to attack or anything because you're. Oh, okay. So I can now. I can now just. Yeah. You're, straight. You're just just cuffs. All right. You're punching, punching down on the guy that's kind of half in the water. <clears throat> all right. Uh, but you miss. But, but map is all powerful, and you miss. And the Lacedon <laughs> uh, counters back, and it's going to swim away from you and towards Joran. Oh. Uh, because it can't. Oh, so it really doesn't want to be up on. Okay. It does not want to be on the holy land. Yeah. <laughs> Joran, it's a hit. Oh boy, it is a hit. <laughs> wow, There's shocking! A... Max damage. There's I didn't see man. that coming. <laughs> Max damage. Uh oh, are you uh, down? Yep, Joran. Uh, oh shoot. Yep, Joran. Dead. Yes. <laughs> um, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Uh, Joran, you begin floating in the water, unconscious, threatening to drown. Okay, uh, that was his turn. Joran, I'll move your initiative. Technically, uh, Droga, you're next. <laughs> Great. Uh, all right, Barrick. I'm holding a magic spear though, which is illuminating light. Yeah, so. Bob, you can mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. see that guy. By the way, you can totally saw him. Just come over and kill well, me I want for max damage for the fourteenth time this session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe twenty. I mean, it might be twenty. It's, it's like we need to push this log. There's there's shenanigans occurring. Listen, if somebody in the chat they're hearing this now, well, oh, you're the statistics major. No, no, I'm saying you know that this is messed up. Oh, the odds of this happening are unfathomable. <laughs> 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 I still think he's too far away from me. He's 255 feet. Bob, you're measuring with your movement. Oh, my uh, God. Uh, <laughs> you have, you, have you thought that it was out of your bow range this entire time? <laughs> uh, yes. It was travel through difficult terrain, guys. Good night. Today we learned. <laughs> I took the measure tool. And uh, by the way, he's the most experienced player in our group. <laughs> he's so experienced. Droga. <laughs> Hunted prey is going to hunted shot him. That's a hit. Or a uh, hit. Are you shooting that bow from the deep water? No, he's no. at the edge of the shallow water. The okay, okay, okay. Double hit for 12 damage. Excellent, excellent. He's badly injured. I, I end my turn. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Sorry right. about that, guys. Uh, Maybe that fight was harder because it was, you know, we were basically just down a guy. Because your ranger with his maximum damage wasn't shooting him. Yeah, your range, the ranger was like, I don't have range. <laughs> yeah, but I was do I'm doing 10 damage to this thing. They're 230 feet away. What did you expect? I know. It was a super big, big shot. Uh, okay, Breck. Uh, Joran does fall unconscious, but there is a Lacedon right in the middle of all of you. So, yeah. So, Breck's going to, you know, to he's, he's got to do, do a full stride to move yeah. there, but yep. we're going to bring down the hatchet. We're going to try to take this dude out and then save Joran. All yep. right. So, that's a hit. That is a hit. Come on, big damage. Oh, big damage. 
All right. And He's then dead. We, and then we pick up pick up Jordan before he goes underwater. Got so, it. yeah, we got each other this fight. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was you all along. Yeah. So You're <laughs> here. There's nothing I fear. <laughs> And there's no way both of us can fit on this raft. And no. <laughs> even though both of us totally could fit on this raft, you just you just gotta let me drown. I'm sorry, you're, you're, just, just, you're We're five feet from the shore. Just like nah, I'm just, never let go, Jordan. It's my I'm time. It's my time. It's okay. <laughs> I'll never I let go. I start pushing him under. <laughs> it's like <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sister, sister Cinder is Sister Cinder is with you. Yes. All right. Well, per, perfect timing. Um. Uh. As uh. As it's about nine fifty. Um. All right. The Lacedons that guarded the sacred pool are slain. Um. Let me check the. Let me check. By the way, uh, check my body in the rink circle, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, by the way, poll and chat. I, 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 sold the I asked about token action HUD, yay or nay. Uh, 80% of people said yay. So yeah, uh, I like to remind awesome. you 80% of people on the internet said Bodie McBoatface was a great name for a scientific vessel. <laughs> that is correct. Internet. That is true. <laughs> um, I think the HUD's awesome. Somehow. I, I can't believe it. Uh, we're, 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 we're only at 30 viewers. I, how is that possible? How could we possibly have lost viewers? <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe we went from 24. Oh, there we go. We lost one. All right. All right. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to watch this amazing quality fun? It's, um, it's just like CR. I don't understand. Are you not that's, entertained? Listen, I mean, that's my critical, just... critical role. No, it's the last call. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, right. At what point did you turn off? Was it after the jump from the top row? Right. Like, where, where was the point? I mean, really, this character just needed a shark so we could jump over it. Um, <laughs> what, was it when the Rangers? I should have put in a win. I should have put a win. Swim for four <laughs> turns. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to. Uh, <laughs> what a missed opportunity to put a wear shark in. Okay, maybe next time. Maybe next time. All right. Well, just swam around because he's like, I don't think we can actually attack anything. All right. Well, the good news is though the combat is over, and you guys are able to. Uh, <laughs> That's the good, good news. The good news. <laughs> and you guys are able to. Guys, we're done. You guys are able to make it onto the sacred island with the glowing runic circle. Um. And as we approach the end of the session, you can feel within um this. Uh, circle is a, a, a bastion or a font of holy or divine energy. And Joran, now that you're close enough, you can. I am unconscious. Okay, Joran, now that you are unconscious, <laughs> I can. Do, do I have a, a fever dream? Can yeah. I do a heal check? Joran, you can... have a fever dream in your. Oh, I go to the light. <laughs> <laughs> Cass, minus two penalty to your check. <laughs> Because he's actively trying to die. Oh, he <laughs> crits. Uh, excellent, excellent. And what do we say to death? Not today. Not today. Uh, well, you're restored one hit point, Joran. You come back to you come back to them now at the turn of the tide. Oh, oh boy. That was a heel right. check. Just imagine him coming back. There you go. No. Uh, uh, so double that. So you get 18 hit 18 points. 18 hit points. All right. Wow. Big kill. All right. Um, Jordan, in your one. wounded one. Nope, you are wounded zero because you got oh, treat it was a, This game is. <laughs> you were treated. You weren't met healed by. Right, I wasn't healed by God. <laughs> Someone wrapped Kaz a bandage, on your bandage and stuck it on me. To be clear, if you're healed to full by any means, you also lose your wounded status. Sure. Um, in your fever dream, uh, you did have a vision of Sister Cinder. Okay. Um. She, uh, you see, uh, you see this spirit, you see this place being corrupted. You see a powerful spiritual entity, the image of a massive saber toothed tiger, yep. ghostly form, horrific, tearing apart, you know, countless people reaching through his rage, radiating and rippling out. But you also understand the importance of this place, the sacredness of this place. The fact that it once was a font for the primordial flame. The fact that this was once almost an archive, a legend, uh, um, a library of your people's uh, or, you know, your adopted people's history and sister Cinder still blesses this place. Um, you see a vision of her bestowing her countenance upon this runix tablet. Um, this is recent. This is only in the last few weeks. Um, she has put 
this here for you. Oh. Oh. At least that's what your fever, unconscious vision dream is. Can I speak in my dream or is it like a vision? No, no, you can speak. I mean, there's some there's some back and forth. You know, it's more of like a glowing fire. Think Eye of Sauron, but not yeah, scary, I you know? like right, it's- right, right. Yeah, I, I yell into the, the fire. Yeah. You know? There's sort of like an, instead of an Eye of Sauron, it's like this sort of quasi-feminine, angelic figure, you know, with flame and light radiating off from it. Sunray, you are the mother of redemption. I know slaying this ghostly creature is wrong. Tell me how, how do I redeem the spirit of this place? How do I restore your order? Show me. I cry into the angelic storm. Much must be done, Joran of Mendev. You have many paths to walk. I have left for you Weapons, powerful tools that may aid you against the growing fight. The spirit of Syarstic must be quelled before its madness can be restored. But only the primordial flame's recovery can cure this noble beast of the curse which now afflicts it. You must go to it and learn of from its secrets. Beyond you will find the answers that you seek in the room of maps. But stay true to your point, Joran. Do not give in to do not give in to, to into desperation. I know that the, the <laughs> <laughs> I know that the bottle calls you, Joran of Mendel. Oh, so much. <laughs> but you have you left that path behind to walk in my grace, Joran. You must save these people. It is the only way that you can ever redeem yourself. You've then, chosen wrong. You've what? always chosen wrong. And then Thrawn is giving you mouth to mouth, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> I, I give it back. <laughs> he gets a little bit of the snake and in, in, animal instinct there. Oh, snake a little... animal instinct. <laughs> um, Strat says, "Goddess of Redemption, go take these weapons to kill better with." Yes, this is Pathfinder <laughs> Two. Uh, it's Pathfinder Two. What do you want? Um, Redeem through murder. All right. Well. With, with Joran recovered, you can now sense and feel the power of the glowing runic circle. It should be a lootable item. Oh, a lootable item that has ghost touch on it. Yes, it has four oh. ghost touch runes. Oh, in these it. are runes. Cool. Oh, yes. Nice. Uh, and because we're playing, the, the way this works mechanically is all of your items are ghost touch. Oh sweet! Because I'm like I literally just threw one of my weapons right. into the water. So it's like a go- like it's a ghost like you could put it onto your character like okay. in your equipment. But we it, eat it. Yeah, but essentially, um, as you approach the runic circle, there's suddenly a flare and a flash of light, and all of you are surrounded in a powerful white nimbus, which circles and spirals around you, coalescing like like ethereal clouds, and that energy sort of whirls around you and then pours into sort of your heart chakra and suffuses throughout your body, ending in your hands, which sort of glow with a white flaming light. And you find that whenever you sort of concentrate on a weapon, it also becomes limed in this sort of white, hot, glowing flame. It's not enough to really cause much illumination. I mean, you could probably read by it. It's like a candle light. But um, you can basically make your weapon ghost touch at will. Sweet. Awesome. So, um, which will come in handy against all of the spectral and uh, spiritual undead that you have to like face. Ghosts. Like ghosts. Like a spirit. Uh, like a spirit of Sire stick. To be clear, this was sort of a bonus encounter. You didn't actually have to come fight this and get this, oh. but um, oh, nice. Uh, but uh, but you did so. All right. So with the powerful blessing of Saren Ray in hand, the Ghost Touch runes equipped to their weapons, giving them a chance against the incorporeal creatures which await them deeper in Red Cat Cave. How does this work? Because don't you need to have like a technically you do, but this isn't well okay. technically your weapons are all plus one. Oh, they are, are? They? you're level two. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Automatic bonus progression, guys. Oh, that that comes in automatically. Though. Yeah. Well, and you can only have a number of runes on your weapon equal to the bonus. And yeah. the bonus okay. is one. No, Derek's right. Yeah, we're totally good. You're I, totally- I, to- I mean it's been like a month. I totally forgot. That's totally <laughs> fine. So alone 
in the heart of Red Cat Cavern, sitting on a sacred island in the middle of a pool once worshipped as the sacred Earth's blood by the people of the Kelly people of the realm of the Mammoth Lords. Here, where the finger of Saren Ray, Sister Cinder herself, etched runes of power into a stone so that future Kelly warriors might walk the path that these individuals are doing now. Sister Cinder has guided you with her benevolence and her blessing through your own actions, as well as the prayers and faith of Joran. Sister Cinder is with you, as are the spirits of your ancestors in this strong place. There will be many, many temptations to distract you, uh, temptations to turn you from your path towards the easy path, and there will be hard choices to make because the history of this place and the power of the primordial flame is becoming more and more clear to you that Grandfather Iowa was, was right. The primordial flame is not just needed to save the broken tusks or potentially to mend the rift between the burning mammoths and the broken tusks. This is, goes beyond your one small following as dear and as precious as it may be to you. This is about saving the lives, the livelihood, the very memory of your entire people, stretching all the way back to the age of darkness and the way of life which they hold so sacred, this pure, unadulterated, uncomplicated, simple way of living, an honorable way of living at risk because of the theft of the primordial flame. Only its recovery can save the realm of the mammoth lords. And while you may be successful in saving the broken tusks from destruction at the hands of the burning mammoths, should you fail in your quest to recover the primordial flame, the future for them is limited at best. And certainly their children's children will not know days of peace and prosperity. All right, that no pressure. No, no pressure. Uh, that is the end of our uh, session, episode seven. MVP of the session is with overwhelming majority Joran of Mendev. What? I was dead half well the time. Well done. We I think heels, excellent. Uh, kept us running. I think people appreciated the big heels. I think they appreciated yeah, the man. the diving. Uh, David Hasselhoff. I think that 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 got a lot of people. Um, that was good. Action. Thank you for your votes. So uh, 53% Joran and then 20% Breck, 13 and 13 Thrawn and Droga. So thank you very much, everybody. How for... did I get any votes? Jeez Louise. <laughs> when, terrible. When you remembered that the 70 foot wide corridor wasn't 290 mm -hmm. feet mm -hmm. long, they were like, you know what? That's that's pro yeah. ranger right there. That's pro hey, ranger. That's character right. development. He grew. A lot of yeah. rangers never would have figured that one out. <laughs> um, <laughs> this whole time, I was just shooting into the water. Turns out, yeah, I should have been shooting yeah. over the water. <laughs> I was trying to like so. I was trying to like torpedo those. <laughs> yeah, I thought my arrows <laughs> turned into torpedoes in the water. <laughs> um, this seems ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> turns it's out, like men in tights. He pulls out a missile that. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Flies around. <laughs> um, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, it's 10 o'clock, so we are going to end this stream here. We've got, uh, our next episode is October 11th. Uh, that's going to be episode eight. We're going to hopefully probably finish up Red Cat Cave, but more importantly, at the end of this session, because the group fought a severe and a severe plus encounter, oh. the group gets 260 XPs. Oh my oh goodness. My and you know what that means? I think it means Math level time. <laughs> well, no, you're playing <laughs> found. You're playing foundry. It all levels up automatically. It's great. Oh yeah, you're playing uh, foundry. Uh, so that means that you guys level up to three, which is really great. Uh, it's going to be very coming a lot of helpful when you go to fight uh, Cyrus Stick for sure at the end of the cave. Um, but that means level two spells for our war priest. Um, and it means oh, I get spells. You're right. Very yeah, nice. I totally forgot about that. Well, people in the in the Discord of the patron. You know, we can talk about how to make my ranger still great at level well, three. Well, I think you just get a general feat. I think that's it. Boo, <laughs> this man. Wait, the Mark Seifter? Uh, no, I, I, I like Mark. <laughs> I, 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 who else are you booing? If uh, you're general complaining? feats? Ugh, general feats. Come on, Bob. You're going to move five feet faster. Uh, so you think I'm taking fleet? Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so much had... choice in this game. Uh, strat, strat goes healing font just doubled in power. It literally did. Now yeah. they do. Now they do two d eight plus sixteen each. Yeah. <laughs> 
like overnight. Chonka heels. <laughs> yeah, it's just big chunk of heels. Oh, we're gonna need an overnight duck because I don't have any spells. So right now, healing font does zero. Right. Well, the good <laughs> news. Out. Well, the good news is, uh, you know, by the blessings of Sister Cinder and the power of this place, uh, a few hours so rest here in this holy place is equivalent to a long rest. Oh, so yeah, we're gonna suck all that serenade yeah. right into us. You know, you had a divine uh, vision, so Joran. It was it was great. <laughs> Very um, relaxing, as they often are. Yes. Right. Um. Okay, well, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. And remember, we're going to stay on this Zoom call. Not Kaz. He's sick. He's going to dip out. But we're going to stay on this Zoom call for a little bit of time. Uh, if you're a champion tier or a hero tier, we're going to send the invite to this Zoom link over to the Discord. You can hang out with us, chat with us. Uh, I know last time we went like 90 minutes. That's not going to be the case today. We're only going to probably hang out for about 20 or 30 minutes tops. But you're welcome to hang out and let us know what you think. Um, we will uh, be live Thursday uh, with uh, – we with. I don't know if we're doing the mid-levels of the class tier review yet. We might wait on that, but we're going to be live Thursday regardless with some fun bonus stuff. That's always been our free thing to do crazy stuff ever since All Spells Ranked ended. Um, so maybe in the Discord, let us know what might be interesting for you on Thursday. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you like this channel, you want to support us, you want to hang out with these guys, you want to hang out with this crazy chat, and you want to talk role-playing role games, if you want to join our Northern Reaches campaign, which is ending Season 1 here in a couple months, sign-ups end October 15th for Season 1, then you got to hop, hop onto our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nights the Last Call. You can join up at the Hero tier, Champion tier, Knight tier, or the Squire tier. If you just want to get your feet wet and you don't uh, want to get too involved yet, but it's a low price option. It'll get you in the discord. But if you want all the fun toys and stuff, you need to be in at that champion tier. You need to be in at that hero tier. So we look forward to seeing you on the discord and for everybody else uh, on behalf of Bob Smith, Tim and Kaz, I want to say thank you so much for coming out with us tonight and we'll see you next time on nights of last call.